What's going on, brothers? Welcome back to another episode here on the O'Shea uh, Duke Jackson channel. I am your host, O'Shea Duke Jackson, man. And we have moved the Hall of Game from the vlogcast to my main channel. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my other channel for a little bit more of the black YouTube community stuff and more of the professional content we're going to bring over here. So especially it catered towards more black male development and black male thinking and stuff like that. So today we have our brother, man. Who uh, we have two successful brothers, you know, brother Sub Zero. He was over here uh, a few days ago. Also in the tech industry, we have brother Gabe in the tech industry, and we're using brother Gabe's topic, man. Uh, and we'll be talking about this, I guess, from two two perspectives, right? Because this is more aimed at uh, black men choosing uh, a career for the future, educationally. But also, we'll talk about some things for guys. Maybe we we could talk about guys who want to change careers. I know Sub Zero will be great at that, and even you, Gabe, because you. You've done that. So we'll try to basically Absolutely. make it a show to fit, um, you know, the, 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 the traditional guy and the non-traditional guy and the career changing black man. We'll do that. But let's start off with our brother, Gabe A. Well, actually, I'll leave Gabe for it. We'll start off with Sub-Zero. Let him introduce himself. What's going on, brother Sub-Zero? Hey, what's going on, Sub-Zero? 3639. I run Lifting the Veil IT Academy. Hit me up. You know who it is. All right. Uh, okay, and just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, brother, for some of the things that you do, college and all that uh, stuff. You know. Well, okay, went to Tuskegee University, played basketball overseas, did modeling, did comedy club, full-time real estate investor, housing bubble happens. I was in a down-and-out situation working as a produce manager at a grocery store by the name of Win dixie based in Jacksonville, but it was in Montgomery that I was doing it. Uh, my brother worked for Oracle, told me about it. I got into database development, and I've been doing that for about 10 years. I'm a, a SQL Server, but database developer. Also, I do, uh, like I said, I train people. I got about video I put up yesterday with all my little testimonials of my students, or most of them anyway, give or take one or two, that uh, are pretty much working, making 90, you know, up, you know, 100,000, whatever, students that I train. So that's where I'm at. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and thank you again, brother, uh, for, for coming. Let's go to brother Gabe, man, the man of the hour. What's going on, brother? Hey, hey, not too much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Hey, Gabe A. Um, I guess educationally trained in Michigan. Uh, I went to school for electrical engineering, got my bachelor's in that. Transitioned over more into like the automotive field, working with Ford, doing wire harness design engineering. Transitioned over to the nuclear side because the scene that wasn't really being trained didn't really see a future in that. So I started working as like a nuclear uh, INC engineer, um, instrumentation and control engineer. And then a uh, little virus happened in the Middle East called Stuxnet. And it pretty much changed my whole career trajectory where I st they started putting me on a lot of the cybersecurity projects for the nuclear plant. So I started doing cybersecurity for nuclear plants and kind of ever since then, it's kind of bubbled into cybersecurity for industrial environments. So, um, yeah, now I work as a senior consultant in that particular area, do a lot of different security for industrial control system engagements, but I'm also in school too, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is crazy. So I'm going for my master's in uh, cybersecurity technology. And I am also trying to develop a podcast of myself uh, to kind of give more information to individuals within our community about how I do and ways that they can get into it. So that's who I am. And yeah, that's what it's about. All right. All right. Shout out to Brother Howard Cooper for the 10 hour super chat. What up, everybody in chat? All right. I'll say something. My name is uh, O'Shea Leroy Bartholomew Duke Jackson. Um, Bachelor's of Science in Biology, went to the UC Berkeley Post back, came to medical school internationally. I'm almost sort of done, I guess you could say that. Um, Negro entrepreneur, uh, lost a lot of money, tricked off a lot of money, but I'm doing all right right now. And I'm the third smartest person on this show. All right. So <laughs> you are. let's get it. Okay. Let's, let's start with you, brother Gabe. And, um, obviously mm -hmm. this is your topic. Cause you gave me a few topics, yeah. um, that you, we, 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 we've collected, you, you give me some topics that we can talk, talk about what we can choose from. This one's important. Now, let me also do this. I know that now is this topic um, catered towards guys that are coming that, that are basically in high school, going to college, guys who are wanting to go back into college. Um, 
degree switcher holders. Yeah. I mean, wait, 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 who who are we? Who are the target audience today? I think it kind of hits like the full the full gambit, right? Individuals who are looking to go to college or already out of college who might already be professionals. I think it, the 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 topic came about just primarily as informational, where anybody can kind of jump in at any time. Um, so yeah, I guess it's not particularly focused on one group of individuals, but kind of mm-hmm. for us the full gambit of people. So okay, yeah. let me let me take take this question out of Sub Zero's talking point. Now I want to. Yeah undergrad as a biology major i believe all of us had uh some sort of stem background by a uh, 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 undergrad major yeah um and we remember when we were studying for finals you know like if you go to howard everybody's in the yard hanging out the communication students the school of b communications um a lot of black men that were in college at the time that although it was more dominated by women um a lot of guys were not in the majors that were the most rigorous right um, so let's, I mean, like, did you notice that also when you were in, well, you went to Michigan Tech, so that might be a little bit different, but. Well, I mean, maybe not. I definitely agree with you there, right? Mm-hmm. I think, um, it was like, if you were majoring in electrical engineering, they thought that you were kind of crazy. So like, let's see, out of the individuals. So we had probably like around a hundred black students that went to our, like overall, right? Mm-hmm. Individuals who would be considered ADOS who went to Michigan Tech. And out of all of us, I think there were only two of us who majored in electrical engineering and actually graduated and finished. Um, So, yes, individuals thought it was pretty crazy because it was so rigorous and so difficult. But um, and yeah, just like you said, around finals time, like we were always in the lab, like the engineering lab, the circuits lab, you name it. We was in some type of lab in somewhere (laughs) doing some some type of work for a project or studying for a final. But yeah, it was thought as being very rigorous and you crazy for doing it. And like uh, you doing all this work, you, ne- you don't really know the payout at the end. Those are some of the ideas that were kind of given around majoring in uh, kind of rigorous uh, major. So, yeah, I have to agree with you there. Well, let me let me ask you this. What, what up, Brother Kyrgyz Brown? What up, uh, Brother Julius Brown? What type of I mean, now, now, now that we're uh, kind of know what this this, this show is for. Um, well, actually, who is this show for? Let's talk about that. Like, um, in, in other words, how do you come up with this topic uh, uh, today mm-hmm. that, that we could talk about? I think a lot of times individuals may be hearing, especially in these black metal sphere, YouTube streets, right? That, hey, automation is coming. Automation is coming. People aren't majoring in the right things. People aren't going into the right career fields. All these things will lead kind of like we'll leave the black community as a permanent underclass. Right. Um, And I think that that is kind of the origin of why I came up with this type of topic is because I think it will inform individuals of some things that might very much so be on the rise that people can start getting into now. Right. Because what are the projections? 2053 or so. And I think that um, 2053, sure. Right. That might be a time in which it's a very integral year but i think that in order to be leaders and individuals who are on the cutting edge of some of those technologies before that time i think that it requires some preparation and i think right now is the time to prepare to go into those majors which will be viable in the in the uh future so again kind of this is for everybody and it's kind of somewhat of a response to what's happened in the in the uh the the black metal sphere streets <laughs> yeah okay okay um what what's the what's our first step and then we'll go to uh, okay so i got three of them right but uh i'll just start with the first one and the first one is kind of i think it's low on the radar i think it's low on a lot of people's radar because people don't don't really think about it from a societal perspective so the first career path or major that i'm looking at is that of elderly home health care oh geriatric (laughs) yes of course Uh, a lot of people don't think about that, right? So right mm-hmm. now, right, the baby boomers are getting older and older, they're getting older and older by the day, right? They're collecting their pensions, they're collecting their social security, they're collecting their disability, but they are not really able to contribute to the economy, right, mm-hmm. at the moment from a work type of perspective. Mm-hmm. But these individuals are still alive, they still exist. So these individuals need 
healthcare. And I think that a lot of times people look at it as like in the days in which people would just throw their grandfather, grandmother, mother or father into a uh, uh, like an elderly home. Mm-hmm. But what but what is a trend that's happening right now is that the elderly a lot of times they want to age in place, which means that they want to they want to live, breathe and die at home at the home that they live in, that they grew up in. Right. So I think that that's a very big thing where on the rise, home health care services are growing and growing. Right. So for men and I think individuals who want to get into that type of field, you don't necessarily have to have to be like a, like a home nurse or a home health practitioner, but you can actually start up your own business in in home health care services. So there's actually resources and I'm trying to provide those uh to you because I've been doing some research on this is that individuals can start up their own business. They can hire individuals like nurses or healthcare professionals. And then you can have this as a business from home where you're pretty much managing individuals going out to particular clients in order to address some of their home healthcare services from home, like doing just cleanup or cooking meals or just spending time with individuals. These things can be very viable as it concerns uh, a different field to get into. So individuals, I would think that the major for this will probably be somewhere around business management, master's of business administration, or you, you, wait, 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 you, you, you went out, uh, your, your mouth, your mic is muted. Hold on one second. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Say it again. Yeah, so I was just saying that probably the major would probably be if you're looking at school for this, right? Would be a, mm-hmm. a business administration bachelor's mm-hmm. or master's of business administration or okay. none, right? Because you don't even necessarily have to have uh, any type of education in order to start up your own business. Mm-hmm. And again, that's home, like elderly home health healthcare services. So mm-hmm. that would be the first first one that I would think about. First one, okay, 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 okay. Um, well. So give me a second. Let's go ahead and run through the, 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 the three and then let's see what we got. What's the yeah. second one? OK, sure. So the second one would be that more of so kind of individuals getting into that of like smart grid technologies. Right. Mm-hmm. So we have especially in the United States, we have an old electrical grid. Right. As soon as a squirrel jump on one of them lines, all <laughs> electricity in the neighborhood out as soon as a tree fall onto one of them lines or hit a trans a, 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 a substation it goes down as soon as there's a thunderstorm right or the threat of a a, a thunderstorm everybody loses power in the whole entire city right mm-hmm. and I, and this is and and again this being a little bit of my background this is one of the major reasons for um moving into that more of a smarter type of grid because there's so many inefficiencies individuals are losing uh, so much reliability of elect- electricity. And now more than ever, we're reliant upon electricity for so many different things in our lives, right? Not only you know charging our iPhones, but individuals are moving more towards electric vehicles where they're charging their cars, right? So, uh, so if you need smart car or car charging, like reliable car charging, you need to have the ability in order to um, be able to charge your car uh, reliably. So you cannot have a grid keep going down because that would affect your ability to get from point A to point B in your vehicle if you have electric vehicles. So individuals kind of getting into some of those type of technologies. Um, and and that even gets into more of alternative fuels with solar power and wind mm-hmm. power. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different, I guess, angles to like there with the smart grid or smart electric uh generation transmission and dish and distribution so that's kind of again kind of my major right with the, with electrical engineering like we studied this i mean i was in school back in like the early 2000s and we were studying a lot of these different technologies even even then so there so i would say electrical engineering or controls engineering those are some very good um, um majors to get into if you're looking at getting into more of that smart grid type of technology Okay. Okay. So that was the second one. Second one. Okay. And then after that third, after this one, give me one more uh, sub zero. Thank you, brother Joseph Asbury. Let me just shout him out. Mm -hmm. That brother is a really, really good photographer out of New York. I saw uh, the DJ Mavic air. That brother was uh, gave me some really good advice on that. Good stuff. He's talking about long time boss. 
need to get on your show very soon, man. Let's do it, man. I want to do it on this channel. I'll leave all, I'll leave all my stuff for the naked stuff on my other channel now. I'll <laughs> leave all my good stuff over here. Okay, what are the most constructive vlog series on YouTube? Thanks, O'Shea Gabe, Sub-Zero. No, no problem, brother. Let me go ahead and bring Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero is back on, but let mm -hmm. me see. Well, Sub-Zero, which one are you on, man? I, I thought I was on one. I don't know what that is. Two of no, 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 yeah, no, you, no, no, you're fine. No, you're fine. Okay, thank, thank okay. you. Okay, let me do this. Let me let me let uh, Gabe um, talk about the third one, and then we're gonna go to Sub Zero for more of a uh, more of a hands on approach. All right, go ahead, brother Gabe. The third one. Yeah. So the third one definitely is the field that I'm in right now. Is that of cybersecurity, right? Okay. I mean, as things are progressing more and more, we're becoming. It's we're just moving more and more into more of a digital age where not only your personal inf information is passed mm -hmm. through applications and software zooming across the internet from one part of the world to another part of the world mm -hmm. but you also even have um people like your elderly right who are very big victims of cybersecurity attacks or just just digital attacks people can call up your grandmother and say hey we need your password to your to your computer in order to help you with the service or whatever they don't really have an understanding of it so you know, there are a lot of different ways that malicious actors or uh, malicious individuals can um, steal information from you to cause some type of harm in your life. So I think that this is just a really good, good field. And as it concerns industry, I mean, you name it, like in industrial environments, you need cybersecurity, financial, especially um, you have health, health care, right, with HIPAA, like that's a huge, huge thing. I mean, you even have like manufacturing facilities that need security as it concerns reliability of services. So, you know, I think that that's the third one. Uh, kind of even like a major, I would say, would probably be like a uh, bachelor's in information systems or anything kind of technical. You can even go, go, go start off in engineering like I did and transition into cybersecurity. So those are like the three. First one, elderly home health care services. Second one smart grid tech mm -hmm. technologies maybe solar or wind and the third one would definitely be that of cybersecurity. so those were the three that i was thinking of okay and guys after the show we're going to pin these notes to the top of the comments so that you guys can check these out shout out to leo anthony again brother joseph asbury again cyber is the next frontier people we deal with that directly indirectly too thank you my brother again for the support uh and then brother sam i do Truck driver and brother, my brother from New Jersey area always calls in. Shows like this are important. It can't be the fuckery all the time. All right, let me talk to Brother Sub-Zero about career changing. Um, now, Sub-Zero, you went to uh, school for, uh, what was your computer science major? Yeah, I was actually a computer science major. I played basketball at Tuskegee, went there three and a half years, got to the end and finished the last, uh, what is it, nine months of my college at Troy State Montgomery. Uh, and I just did business administration with information systems. So the thing is, I'm I'm on the other end of the spectrum. He, Gabe seems to be more of, uh, he probably been doing this since he got out of college. Me, I was a dad. I did all that other stuff I told you. And so yeah, for me, yeah. I had- All in Brazil and stuff, playing basketball? Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm kind of like a, a, a Forrest Gump. I done done it all. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I had to kind of come in in transition in so i couldn't me i was down and dirty i just wanted to get straight to the money i wasn't trying to make no thirty thousand dollars for five years then move up i wanted to go straight to eighty thousand ninety thousand in order to do that i had to kind of go to to things that i knew that were high paying so that's why i went and got into what i got into because my brother worked directly for oracle and he told me this is these are the people that make the money you know and so he kind of steered me from the original way I got into IT. He steered me from certain types of IT because it was so hard for me to get in. I was like, well, hey, I can get this. I can get that. He's like, if you want to be working at the Geek Squad at Best Buy, then go get this. Go do that. If you want to make 80000 or more, do what I tell you. So that's how I got in. And so that's why I train students like I do. And that's why I got the video on my channel where I'm able to duplicate this with other people it's been been proven to do it so okay okay now let me ask you this because um like gabe also did a career change but um what if you're somebody like 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 sam or whatever or a person like even me you know you are in your 30s you want to do a career change you know you already have a family you want to do a career change it's a little bit more riskier 
to take a, you know, the older you get, you know, obviously the younger you are, it's easier to do. But well, how do you get yeah, yeah, age on what, what career to go for and change? You know what I'm saying? Well, let me say this. Um, there are a few ways. You got, if people think it's easy, you actually have to be somewhat intelligent or not necessarily intelligent. You just have to have certain experience to just go and read a book. Mm-hmm. Or watch a video. You can do that, though. I'm not going to say that doesn't work. There are people, certain individuals, who have that level of. It takes a lot of extreme discipline and focus to watch. I'm not talking about some little six hour course on on you know Udemy and then go make X amount of dollars. It's, it takes. You know what I'm saying? You could, if if me being a developer, right? Can you watch a Udemy course and then come? Yeah, but I would know. I would know how to trip you up and see that you're very familiar with this. Mm-hmm. So you would have to, if I was somebody, first thing I would do is go with something instructor led. Reason being, that actually gives you the chance to kick the tires, ask questions. Can you send emails through you to me? Yeah. There's a lot of things in the real time that instructor led courses actually allow you to really get hands on with stuff and get down in the weeds. Uh, me, what I do with my students is I actually give them a resume and actually talk to them about the. I prepare them. I, I interview them myself. I bounce stuff off them. So I'm more of a one stop. I'm not trying to miss an infomercial for my tech class, but I'm just trying to say that you need, us as African Americans, we need more than just going to lender.com and watching a video. Although there are certain people that can do that, that can just watch a video and next thing you know, they got a job making 60, 70,000. That's rare. Most of the time I see people, it takes a long time, it takes trial and error, it takes going on interviews and screwing up. You go on interviews and, like, for example, when I got in, nobody talked to me. Nobody talked to me about a production environment. So I would answer questions not understanding the urgency of, of production. Like somebody had, because I didn't have nobody to teach me that. I went to a company. They taught me one specific, this is what it is. This is SQL. This is SSRS. This is SSRS. They didn't teach me about stand-up. They didn't teach me about agile. They didn't teach me about any of that. So I got out there and made a lot of mistakes. So that's what I try to do. I try to give my students a more holistic approach from a black mindset, from an African American male standpoint. Okay. And so you kind of need that. Let, let, let's talk about that. And shout out to my my brother uh, Craig uh, Craig Harper, man. Uh, thank you for the support. In in uh, Mike Shinnery, um, he swapped careers in his thirties with a big family, but I had a GI Bill allowed me to work part time, take my classes. You got to be willing to sacrifice if you want to improve. Let me let me let me talk to you about this, brother. Um, you, you, you make a good point about attacking things from how an African-American male may see it. And just recently, we've been just talking about, like, like you know, for a long time, African-American men mindset in business, like people know that African-American men um, are in business here and there or in tech here and there or medicine here and there. But in comparison to other groups of people, how do we tend to process things? I mean, obviously, we all think and learn a little bit different. But what is the African-American mindset typically – you know, when it comes to uh, learning, uh, when it comes to uh, understanding these type of things, what what's different about how we learn or uh, understand concepts than than other people? You asking me or you no, no, you, me? you, you, you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I honestly, I mean, I I kind of think our thing is we have a more a shorter attention span, so I okay. think we need to be in a, I think we would actually probably prosper when we're serious in a classroom setting more so than just somebody that can, that, and if you're a type of person that I feel like come from a culture like Asians where they'll put two and three hours a night in homework, African Americans put 30 minutes in a night. Mm-hmm. So n- not that we can't do it, I think what happens, because I've seen students do it. The thing is you have to be in a situation where you can interact and communicate with someone straight when you were ready for that time, when you were at that time in your life, if you 17, 16, you chasing girls in basketball like I was, and I, I was a terrible student. But when I got older and I was ready, I sucked it up because I wanted it. And when right. you're ready, when you, you know, they say when the, when, the student, when the pupil is ready, the teacher will appear. It just, you know, I think black people need to be more in a, I, that's why I'm an HBCU guy, because I believe that HBCUs are more nurturing to African American needs in the business environment. Okay. I know we say, well, we need to get used to dealing with white people. But you're in America. You can always get used to dealing with white people. But right. being in a nurturing environment, 
preparing you. Like when guys go to Morehouse and they make them wear suits and they, they ask them what their name, you know, just certain things I've met. I've seen with different people at HBCUs. It, sometimes we need to be a little bit more nurtured than I think other segments of the population. Not that we can't do it, but we need somebody to say, hey, this is production. This is QA. This is UAT. Nobody ever told me that. And they just assumed, everybody just assumed I knew. I didn't. So. Okay. Let me let me let me do this and thank you for that, brother brother brother, brother Gabe. Hey, brother Gabe. Um, mm-hmm. now you you also very similar. Uh, shout out to brother Joseph. Why are brother Joseph the only one giving all this money? Let me read this uh, in in a minute. But let 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 let, let me ask you this: You are also a brother that did a career change. Yeah. While you were doing well, mm-hmm. most people do career changes when things are okay. I gotta do something, which was my case. Right. I believe also that might have been Sub Zero's case to a certain degree too. Mm-hmm. But you were already doing very well, and then you still did, which is typically unheard of, even in white America, unheard of in other parts. It's definitely unheard of in Black America. Why did you take a career change from a, a field that you were already solidified in? Yeah, yeah, man. Kind of even getting giving a little bit more background about where I was at. I was actually even being kind of like uh prepared they were preparing me to become like the program manager for my department because my manager he was older he was probably about 60 65 65 66 or so and he was getting ready for retirement so they were just getting me ready to be the program manager i mean i was going to all the engineering director all the engineering manager uh meetings i was leading out meetings when my manager wasn't there i mean you name it i mean so it's kind of to say I was solid in my field. I was definitely solid in my field and in my plan. And people were just ready. It was so funny because the elderly dudes in my department, they used to call me the golden child. I was like, oh, man, that's crazy. Oh, so, so so, there's even more of a gravity towards it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that that reason for the change was definitely because of the trends. I mean, definitely because of the trends. Okay. And it was a time in which I was like very conflicted because I'm like, why do I? I don't want to give up like my engineering title. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) To be considered to go into uh, IT or cybersecurity, because I don't know if, you know, engineers, they kind of a lot of them are very um, like high minded or whatever. Like I'm an engineer. I'm this type of dude. But uh, the thing that I saw is that the trends were moving kind of away from that tradition and more more into the digital. Right. Engineering as it relates to. The digital environment and cybersecurity, seeing that it was in so many different industries. Because me being a nuclear engineer, I can just work in commercial nuclear plants in the U.S. But me being a cybersecurity engineer or a cybersecurity architect or I- any type of type of role like that, I was able to tr- go into different industries and different career paths that I was not going to be afforded if I stayed in my same position. So when you ask about that career change, I saw a uh, uh, more of upperly, I had more autonomy in my career if I changed than if I stayed. Ah, man, yep. you took my talking point. Let me let there me get is. on this. <laughs> let me get in on this, man. Uh, let me read this. Diversify my business. I added DBA to my business called the Asbury Group, and enables me to incorporate other disciplines such as IT, internet marketing, as well as commercial photo and video. Thank you so much, brother. Um, Son of Israel, good stream, O'Shea. Shout out to Gabe and Sub Zero. I'll be likely working on IT with Sub this winter if everything goes well. Hall, Hall of Game, shout out to that. And we'll put Sub Zero's uh, information if you guys can contact him. Let me just say this me, you know, typically, uh, like I said, I'm the third smartest guy on this panel. So I, I'm usually uh, asking the questions, but I will tell you one thing. Um, at, at age 26, I, gra- I changed major, I graduated as a bio major at 26. Then I was going to be that, but you know, so between not getting into pharmacy school, which I had a few interviews and I had to go back to the UC Berkeley post back and then, and then given one last ditch effort to come here one day before I made that jump, I was making like, I don't know, $70,000 a year or whatever, but I had a, a, a piece of paper and anybody knows me, I'm known for my Stabilo pins. I'm the Stabilo pin king. Cause I'm always graph paper Stabilo. That's a, I'm a medical student everywhere I go. Right. So I have all these pins. Um, I wrote on the goals that I wanted in my life. There's a neighborhood called Fair Oaks in uh, Sacramento, California, and uh, beautiful homes. I wanted my, my my son to go to Jesuit High School, and 
all these things. When I realized, nigga, all of the shit I wanted to do for myself all my life wasn't going to cover $70,000 a year, that's when, <laughs> okay, I wanted a career change. And let me, <laughs> uh, it's simple. It, if what you want to do in your life, nigga, I'm going to tell you niggas the truth. I'm gotta, I got to be real. I'm a niggas coming out of me. When you write that shit on, on a piece of paper, nigga, and that don't add up to what you're making right now, and you know that there is a ceiling that you're going to hit in that particular job, it's time for a change, right? And, of course, um, that, that is what it is, man. And, and that's what took me, uh, took a jump. I came here. And listen, man, now on YouTube, um, I'm, I'm doing better than I ever was with any job that I had. You know, anybody that uh, I could tell you right now, if you fire me before, you can kiss my ass. I'll make more money than you do now, right? But I, I want brothers to really take that into, into, into consideration. Um, and a lot of times, it's not always about doing what you want to do to make the money. Like, you know, it's about doing what you can do to get to where you need to be, and then you enjoy that shit later. But I will tell anybody this. If you are okay where you are right now, maybe you'll need a career change. But if you want more than what you're getting right now, hey, hey, nigga, you gotta, you, you gonna have to, you gonna have to, uh, 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 uh you know, I'm gonna make a, a video on that. But that's some real shit. You can't be complaining about it. That's just really the truth, man. If what you want to do in life, where you want to live, what kind of woman you think you should have, you know, because I'll tell you this, I lived in Del Paso Heights, and, and, and brother Gabe and Sub Zero, you know, you live, you, you guys, you know, you know, from from black communities. You know, when you pull into your street and there's a nigga in front of you and there's a nigga going the opposite, they, they, they're in the middle of the street, parked in, 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 in they blocking the road. Oh, you're yeah. trying to pass by and they just sitting there talking, talking in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, and you, and they you, you scared like you to blow the horn. Yeah, yeah. Like, nigga, you wait back there. Nick. So that happened a few times to me. I said, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I'm tired of these niggas. So. That's my ad. You know, I'm the third smartest person in anything, but that's what I will say. If your goals don't add up to what your money is, then that's when you hit up Sub Zero, Brother Gabe, and all these things. Then you see what these guys are doing, like Brother Sub Zero is talking about. He was doing a job that he didn't like. He had to do something, but what happened? He knew somebody had a better opportunity. Boom! And that's one thing I want to talk about. Shows like this build the network and community of upperly mobile professionally black men that are doing something. And a lot of times brothers are stuck in a place, but don't really know. Cause Google could tell you so much. Like a young brother came in here. He's like, what are some of the careers I can do? I said, Google. He said, I tried Google, but it's not giving me the real information that I need, which is true. Occupational outlook handbook, Out occupational outlook.gov. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's the one. So, so, so tell him again. When I was in high school, there's a book I used to look at every year. That has it's like a periodical put out once a year annually called the Occupational Outlook Handbook. It has all the highest paying jobs on average. The amount of people it has graphs, charts, what the qualifications are to get into them, everything. That's a website, Occupational Outlook dot gov or Occupational Occupational Outlook Handbook. Just type that up. Okay. Okay. And I'm 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 gonna shut up now, but that's all I want to add to the show. Let's go ahead. To, um, let me just uh, go go back to Sub Zero. Okay, let's talk about. Um, thank you, brother Solo. What's up, brother Solo? Let's talk about um the 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 tech. Um, industry because it's such a vast, it's huge. Like because of you guys, I started watching tech and gaming channels on YouTube, and I, which is this is much different from what you guys do. What you do, guys, do is like programming, coding, and stuff like that. I think, but man, the tech industry is so vast. What part of the tech industry are we talking about? When we tell brothers I'm, to go tech, and cybersecurity. Well, and this is the thing. Um, I, every time I come on your channel, I get people that I, I offend people. I just I've spoken with upwards of a thousand people over the last eighteen months. At least thirty percent of them have associates. And bachelor's in computer science, working in insurance, working at, at, at a grocery store, working at a rental car place. I couldn't get a job. I had an internship. I went, got this associates and so and so so and so. They all they advertise in black communities all over the country. And so what happens is we get these degrees and then we don't get the pay. The thing with Gabe, Gabe is an architect. Gabe came in at a high level. 
But I, and, and this is not to, you know, try to compete or anything. I'm just saying in general. I spoke to someone yesterday that said they were trying to get into cybersecurity. They went to the community college in the job. They saw, they, they saw a few jobs for like $13. You need to talk to a brother like Gabe. How would you get in? You need to talk to a brother that, that knows. Like, if it wasn't for my brother, I would have probably went in at, and got me a CCNA, probably started at, you know, at, in some, you know, tech support job making $13. Or even when I, I there was a time when I, I couldn't get in. It took me a year and a half to get in. I went to Best Buy because I had no experience. I went to Best Buy. They wouldn't even let me be a, in the geek squad. They said, you got to have an A-plus certification and you got to work in computers for six months. Before we even let you be in the geek squad. That's how wow. competitive. And I was talking to a white guy that had his master's in computer science and he couldn't get a job. But then you see people like my students whose phones blow up as soon as I put their resume out because I know what to put on them. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about you got to count the guys that really think invest in know how because there are a lot of black people that go into IT and get stuck in the under $20 hour range. Then there are people like Gabe and myself who can make over $100,000. I got students that cleared $100,000 in like the first 12 months they got in this game because I told them what to do. So you gotta know who, you gotta know who to talk to, educate yourself. I spend a lot of time, I talk all day every day with people calling me, asking me about IT. And I tell them, I give you my phone real easy to talk to, but I think sometimes because people are in cybersecurity, they think I'm, no, this bro, I'm over here with a brother making, damn good money doing it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's how you do it. What you going in, what are your credentials, and what does your resume say? If your resume doesn't say the right thing, I don't care what you, you're not going to get a call. They're not even going to call you, let alone get a job. Right, right. Well, let, me, let me just do this real quick. Uh, brother, we, uh, we have Gabe's, uh, shout out to Keep It Techie. Um, that's Brother Gabe's YouTube channel. He doesn't have any content up there right now, but when he does start uh, let's build this content up, guys. Let's get um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'm gonna promote both of brothers' uh, subscriptions. But yeah, like 98. I would like you guys to subscribe to Brother Gabe right now. If we can get 50 subscribers over there, so by the time he starts to create content, he already has a nice little chunk of people over there. So make sure you subscribe to Brother Gabe. A. I just want to say this. Appreciate um, it, for all fields, because we have guys who are in trucking. I've done shows with the dude that they're doing very well. We have guys who are in, um, you know nursing like uh what's the brother out of uh triz super triz out of washington I, let's talk about 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 um the network right what can black men do in you know because you have guys who are in tech that have information you have guys who are like you said in health services that have businesses um do you think that we suffer from a lack of like network and and, and like just brothers don't have access to certain brothers and inside information. And how do we work to rebuild more of a robust network that black men can access certain information that might not be, let's say, uh, on Google or on Yahoo? That's just very generic. How do we get black men into certain situations where mm-hmm. they're getting the same information that a lot of sometimes I would say a lot of Indian people have or um, a lot of uh, other non-blacks have because they because. They have this information. Their people give it to them, but we don't really do a, a, a really good job of giving it to black men. So how can we better effectively um, give these resources to brothers directly <clears throat> so that we can build more of a robust community? Yeah, I think I have a response to that. It's kind of it's really interesting, kind of even the approach that I that I took. So there is a kind of like a. So in cybersecurity, there is a a couple of different fields, right? One is Mm -hmm. offensive security. You're actively, I guess, pursuing a target to try to find vulnerabilities in it, right? And one of the attacks, right, that say, for instance, you come to like a WordPress sign-in page. Uh, One of the attacks is what you call brute forcing. So you take a huge, I mean, thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of username and passwords, try a whole bunch of combinations, in order to try to find out what the one right username and password is to log into that particular account. And I think that that's that's the same approach that brothers should and that I don't think we take that a lot of times. We maybe go to one door and see that that door is shut, so we walk away. And we don't ever approach that particular opportunity or door again. But if you just keep beating down the door, if you keep just, 
I mean, brute forcing your way, <laughs> like reach out to that person, reach out to another person, reach out to another individual, try by phone, try by email, try by LinkedIn, try by face, Facebook and Instagram. I think even the way that we at first, first met O'Shea is that I was just bothering you. I was like, <laughs> I was emailing you. I was hitting yeah. you up and saying I wanted to write and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually you was like, all right, all right, man, I'm going to give you an opportunity. So I had put something up. Of course, I got a little bit more, a bit off more than I could chew. But <laughs> but yeah, like just brute force your way. And again, building a network by continually reaching out to individuals in your community, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, whether they're white, whether they're Asian. I mean, just keep on reaching out until you can find one hit. Because all you need is that one, that one hit in order for you to get in. So but I let think me, that's, let that's me, a good approach. Yeah, you, man, you've been you've been taking my you've been taking my uh, talking <laughs> point, man. So shout out to brother Steve Technology. I say this every time, but this is a variable information. So to all three of you. Let me let me let me shift this to Sub Zero, man. Um, now I will say this because man, brother Gabe was reading my mind. I got to talk about this, and we hate to talk about this, but this is important. With black men. Those of us who are doing well professionally, you know, they kind of we kind of like hit off into this like dark corner, unless you live in Atlanta or someplace like that. A lot of times, man, when you try to go seek information from black men, ouch, niggas be holding information, man. Like yep. very few people are like Sub Zero or like Gabe or like myself. But when you talk about these non blacks, I have to be honest, man. Um, I found. I hate to say this because you mentioned it reaching out to um, non-black people have been more helpful and more supportive. Uh, usually now I'm not saying all the time, but let's talk about that. Cause a lot of times, a lot of black men have a hard time. We would like to work with each other, but a lot of times we have a little bit more bias in like, okay, well, Indians, they only want to help each other or whites only want to help each other or Mexicans. But I found We're out. Not friendly. That, like, they're not friendly. Okay. What's your take on take on that, brother Sub Zero? Because a lot of people say I get a lot of my help from non-whites than I do from blacks. Yeah. What, what do you it's, think about that concept? I ran into it. I'm from Montgomery. Montgomery's the center hub for the armed forces. Okay. Uh I I didn't get help from black. I mean my brother, but right. even my brother, he wasn't gonna do certain things to because he's gonna have basically have to vouch for me and it would put his name and reputation on. When you're trying to get somebody that's trying to get in, what you have to do is you have to be able to vouch for that person that they're not going to ruin your reputation with a ooh, lot of recruiting. Ooh, say that again, brother. Please say that again. You, you have to make sure that this person is competent and not only that, professional and not going to go in there and slap somebody. You see what I'm saying? Not that, not that that's a big... But you know, you have to make sure that you have somebody. This is why I vouch for my students. And, you know, there I say I give them experience, if you know what I'm air quotes. But the thing is, I know they know what they're talking about because I interviewed them myself. I make sure and I kick the tires. If you walk up to somebody, cold turkey off the street, hey, brother, what's going on? Say you go to a meetup, right, one of the meetup things, and you right. see a guy, rarely are you going to be able, unless you really are knowledgeable. And like I say, you know, I, I, this is just my personal opinion, it is not easy to just watch some Linda videos or plural site then go walk in there and get a job. Right. Even though I wish I had Linda when I was good me, and I, I didn't have it. If I knew about plural site, uh, Linda, I would have not ate that up. But that day, and I didn't. I was unemployed. I got fired from my job, mm -hmm. and you know I didn't have any money. I, you know what I'm saying? It was just one of those desperate situations. But cold turkey, man. Most brothers, and if you got to understand, most of us feel like okay, this isn't technically my home. This isn't what I'm really about. I'm kind of masquerading in this industry making as much money as I can, but I really want to do X, Y, Z. I don't want to cut off this gravy train. A lot of blood brothers are full, especially a full-time brother that's not a contractor. See, as a contractor, you can be a little bit more flippant with it, but you can, you're going to get a call the next day and get a job. Mm -hmm. I get calls every day for somebody want to offer me some money to get a job because I've been a contractor so long. But if you've got a guy that's been working with the company seven, eight years, you know that guy doesn't necessarily want to just put his name on the line and say, hey, this guy knows me. So you have to, first of all, be able to prove yourself with one certification. And even when you get those certifications, a lot of times you still starting at the bottom. When I say the bottom, you, you'd be good to get $20. And this for a lot of black people just isn't good enough. And, but you got to understand you have to do that. You, can, you know, one of the things I learned in IT, 
you work a job. Say some of my students, like one student got a job. He's making like $35 an hour. Mark, right? The one that came on here. Then he, he, he quit that job because of his uh, government clearance. He had issues with that because he wasn't really legit like that. So then he got another job for 55. You see what I'm saying? And it was like maybe five months later, he got another offer for $55 an hour. This is because, you know, this is how this industry works. You can kind of jump up because the recruiters call you and they ask you what your rate is. But if you're going to get that, you got to really know your shit. You can't just go in there because now the company's probably paying $75, $80 an hour for you to be there. You know, so you got to kind of really be able to contribute and be confident. So you have to be excellent, man. We have to be as black people. We, we need black excellence like Booker T in, in that mold. You know, we need to really come into these companies and be confident. And the main way you can do that is, like I say, you either spend the money or you come to somebody who can make sure that you kind of fill those gaps. So when you're in that stand-up meeting and they say, okay, do you have any roadblocks? Okay, we're going to assign this task to you in jail. How many days do you think we're going to do sprint planning? How long do you think it's going to take you to do this? You need to be able to give an intelligent answer. And, you know, I didn't have that. And so you, it's, it's, it's an uphill battle. We need more brothers out here in the fight, pulling, trying to help brothers come back. We don't need brothers saying this is not my community. We don't need that. Right. At least I don't think so. We need brothers coming back. Yeah, because there's a lot of brothers that wanted it. Like, if somebody had it came in, it would have saved me a lot of trouble if somebody had it came back and told me a lot of stuff. Nobody told me nothing. My brother told me what he could, but my brother's more of a... He's a different type of developer than me. He knows SQL, but that's all we really had in common. He's completely... He got high, He's an Oracle financials consultant. So he's completely different than me. So, you know, he helped me with the professional aspect of it, but even still, certain things I just didn't know I had to learn through trial and error. So, guys, if it, if it was up to me... I think one of the things, and then also black guys, we just not, black men just ain't friendly most of the time anyway. I mean, right. you know, we already ready for some shit to pop off when we see a dude, you know, like what this nigga looking at type stuff. So as a black man, you got to deal with that. You got to get past that. Is this dude on some fuckery? Is he going to embarrass me? Is he going to humiliate me? Which I can't blame the guy for thinking that way. Because if you vouch for somebody, and especially if you're a full-time employee and that person comes in and does something you, it's gonna look. People are gonna look at you, and they are gonna take it out on. Some people will retaliate. They, I've seen it before. I've seen it. Right. Uh, let me do this. Since you said that, uh, shout out to New Way. Block technicians are high in demand. Salary starting at one fifty k. Hey, uh, black men are not friendly to, the, to each other. And this is the thing on my chat. When you see your brother come into the chat, say hello, everyone. Somebody speak to the people. Okay, that's a, that's a start. All right, because, you know, this is a black man's channel and some people come in the chat room saying, yeah, hello, I'm here. How's everybody doing? And y'all act like y'all didn't see that. Like this brother right here. What's up, everyone? Now, listen, I got to stop my stream to say hi to this brother. OK, now, why you niggas can't do that? And again, this is what I'm talking about. Little things like this. And that's why I make these shows like I make it. I don't expect nobody else to support what I'm doing or to talk to other brothers in the chat. I expect you niggas to do it. I don't expect no money from nobody else. I don't expect nobody to share my shit. I expect, just like the Chinese uh, restaurant, you know, you see a Chinese restaurant I heard in ATL, it's all in Chinese. What does that mean? That means they're not looking for your ass to come in there and support them. Nigga, they're looking for their folks to support them. So when you see the black man coming to the chat, hey, what's going on, man? How y'all doing? This is, man, come on, you brothers got to start to talk to each other in the chat. How you going to do anything if you see that you niggas seen it, I got to stop what I'm doing to talk to the brother. That don't make no goddamn sense. So it all starts with brother speaking, even on the chat, because it make your mind different. All right. So like I said, I don't expect nobody else to talk to him. But I, if a brother come in here and say, what's going on? How are you doing? I expect all the brothers here to have to have that mindset, because if you don't do it, nigga, you, the white man not going to do it. The, the nobody's gonna do it. So you niggas gotta get it together. All right. Shout out to you, brother. Thank you, brother. Keep it techie. Uh, oh, sure. like, uh yes, sir. Yes, sir. One, one quick point, man. Uh, I, I see this a lot of times when we do these tech uh interviews. People always ask, Do you have to have a lot of math? You don't. Um okay. We just have to know what to do. Um, I you know, I, I deal with people that drive trucks and people with electrical engineering degrees. So just any just give me a call, give me a holler, email me. We can talk offline about that. So but, uh, uh, I'll put the email here uh, on the thing. Shout out to Brother B.B. Thomas. Let me just say this real quick before we go back to the other gate bay. One thing, um, when I was looking to make a career change, let's say I was looking to make a change collegiately. 
Um, I was working as a a bagger at this. It was called Albertsons back in California, but now it's I don't know if it's, it's Save Mart. I don't know what it is now. But here's the situation: because Walmart grocery store has completely knocked out a lot of stores that was in California. But I used to always get U.S. News and World Reports. Um, I don't know how good this is with regards to um, someone that is maybe to look at uh, make a change not collegiately. But I will tell you this: when you buy U.S. News and World Reports, even if you're in junior college and you want to transfer, if it's a second degree, it will keep you motivated. Uh, because U.S. News does a more oral report uh, for graduate schools, which is, I think is this, the best publication you can buy if you're a person looking to go into the engineering, MBA, law, uh, medicine, dentistry, stuff like that. Uh, very, very good. Engineering. The fields that make money. And the reason why is they, 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 they have the salaries. They tell you what you need to achieve. What is the scores that you need? So if you're taking the GMAT, like Brother Antoine Wade, who went to uh, Georgia Tech, you know that if I want to take the NBA, I need to get the score on the GMAT, which means I need to get this course in preparation for the GMAT. Okay. I need to buy these sturdy materials, I need to buy these Q banks. This is what I need to do to reach this score to get in. Do they have a part time program? Do they have a part, they have a program in the evening? Do they, what are the, and then they talk about the different specializations. Let's say if you want to do health MBA, he's talking about that. Okay, what's the average starting salary there? What are the recruiters there? And it gets you in your mind to start to go to the process. Like, for example, I was going to be a tax attorney. Um, at one point, I would go to um, the Pacific uh, Majora School of Law just to talk to the admissions guy. Now, I, I didn't take the LSAT at the time, but, um, but I, I was making my mind go there, right? Uh, same thing with uh, when Ross University would come or any medical school would come to the Bay Area. Me and my mom would go listen to the presentations while I was getting my mind ready to make that change. I wasn't ready to do the change at the time, but certainly my mind was telling me the more I get involved, the more hands I shake, the more students that I meet, more confidence I can get that I can do this. So a lot of guys don't buy these publications that come out. You know, you have to read these publications if you want to do, you know, for example, a lot of my content is a spent on YouTube not making videos, but looking at USMLE step strategies, residency step strategies, USMLE board stuff. I, I consume a lot of this stuff because I'm putting my mind there. You understand what I'm saying? I'm putting my strategies there. So when I want to do, I'm, I'm, mentally, I'm going there. Th this has to go there first. And a lot of brothers are not looking to go there. You, you, you got to be looking to go there, okay? Let's say if you look at any of these things, the high producing salary or something like that, immediately your mind has to start consuming this information of how to get there or what you need to do or to research it and all this stuff. A lot of guys don't do that. You know what I mean? So I used to, uh, I mean, so my process to get it even to medical school was because I bought like five years worth of U.S. News and World Reports. I remember I bought one when I, the undergraduate section, it says it had a section of an article on junior colleges. It said, um, and it said 15% of, of, of junior colleges uh, students transfer to university. I said, bullshit, it won't be me. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of guys don't even do that. Like e even if you're going to black colleges, a lot of guys don't even know. Like Southern University, there's no in-state tuition right now. There's no in-state tuition to, um, I mean, out-of-state tuition. Black colleges um, are like, let's say if you're from California, you want to go to Southern, you don't even have to pay out of state tuition right now. But you wouldn't know that if you don't look at these things. So a lot of guys got to just start searching this information now and put your mind where you want to be so that you can go there physically. But your mind got to go there first, if that makes sense. So um, I, I just wanted to just say that. Anybody want to add on, add on that? Yeah, kind of even like one of the points that you – that. Uh, Sub Zero had brought up what I guess it was a question about how come at times black men don't reach out to each other or connect with each other. Um, it's so funny because I actually have an older brother, I have an older brother, and it's so funny because people didn't e don't even know I have an older brother. Now he played basketball and everything in high school, he played overseas, uh, 
and when he was well, he, he played in Indonesia, but before that he played Division One basketball. But it was just like my man, he used to just act like I just didn't exist. I don't, I don't know what it was. He's he's probably like let's see, he's like forty, it's like forty six or something, forty five, forty six or so. But it's like he just. I don't know what it was. He just really didn't rock with me ever. So it's like, as I'm going through like my matriculation through college and high school and everything, he not really paying me no type of attention. He's not really, you know, investing in, in me as a, as a young man or whatever. Right. So it's like, I think a lot of it is because at times we as black men, we don't even believe in each other. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't believe that we can succeed or we can, progress because even after i finished school i started working as an electrical engineer he was like like what you learned in school or whatever like what like how to fix his tv like come over and fix my tv for me or whatever i'm like no that's not what i learned <laughs> like we my older brother so you can't really like i don't know we don't we don't really do that where i just kind of go off on him but i did recognize that him he just didn't believe in me and i still don't think he do honestly <laughs> But you know that's no, that's that's just something. But I think that kind of that's an answer to one of your thing, one of the questions you ask is why can't black men at times work together? I think at times we don't, we just don't believe in each other. We don't believe that mm -hmm. each other are great and that we can be more than what um, society says about us. So, you know, my grandma used to always tell me, man, this is a true story. <clears throat> I used to, uh, um, like, you know, people think like, you know, people who uh, after you get into graduate school or professional school. And you really look at like you think that people who are doctors or lawyers are just such smart people. And in the case, many people are very bright and they can put concepts together and learn really well. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, when you get there, you're like, wait a minute. You don't have to be a genius to do this. Mm -hmm. And my grandma used to always tell me, hey, if they can do it, so can you. I was like, bullshit. No, really. It's, yeah. it's that if you do the studying and you do the repetition and stuff like that. Um, uh, you'll be surprised that anything that anybody else has done, you can do it too. You know what I mean? Like if you really want to do it, you understand what I'm saying? And that's one thing um, that a lot of brothers, I think, lack, even me. Like I was intimidated even my first year. Um, and then I was like, wait a minute, I'm passing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute, I passed first year. Oh, I passed right. second year. Mm -hmm. Like, wait a minute. Okay, well, if I can pass this, I know I can do everything else if I have the right strategy. If I just... You know, it, it's not so much so that you have to be a certain IQ to do this. No, you know, so I think a lot of brothers got to really get 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 to that. Go ahead, brother Sub Zero. No, I, I I was going to kind of piggyback on what Gabe just said. I think I was talking about this earlier this morning. I went live and I was just talking about how I remember when I was a kid and black men weren't as much on this thug tip. And I know, it, you know, we're not talking about that right now. But I'm just saying in general, I think that actually reverberates throughout our whole community most it, there's a city i can't go to where you know it's been times where i would see a black man on the street and wave hey hey bro how you doing he just look at you with this look you know what i'm saying like him yeah, like okay i spoke to you i know you see you didn't speak back it's cool you know we don't smile a lot of things like that and i think in this day and age in this 21st century problem solvers are going over today not the brute not the big muscular you know Debo's not going to run the 21st century. You know what I'm saying? Brothers like Gabe are. You know what I'm saying? Brothers like O'Shea. Brothers that are sharp, critical thinking skills that can problem solve. And those are the men that are going to rule over the next 70, 80, however many years until the 2200s. Uh, 2100s. You know what I'm saying? So we have to kind of make up in our minds what we're going to be and, and you know, stop and kind of you know, put away those childish things. I just think that's something that I think we have, we've been in a, a funk since, since the advent of NWA. I think we've just been, you know, I think it causes us a lot of problems. And so if anything, if you're listening to this, man, just, you know, I think that's something that we need to stop doing is because I, I don't like that. I don't like feeling like with my brothers, because, you know, I may see a brother on the street. He may not want to speak, but if a cop grab him and shoot him and choke him, I'd be the first one upset or angry about that. You know what I'm saying? So we do care about each other. So, and that's why we got the black man because we care about each other. So I think we need to operate accordingly and start moving in those directions so we can build together as men. I mean, a lot of us are angry for a lot of things we've been through in this country, but 
frowning and being angry a lot of times towards others, especially people who are in a position to help you, is only going to continue to perpetuate, perpetuate that situation. So we got to kind of think logically as men and, and not be so more emotional and controlled by emotions. Because a brother, if I speak to you and you don't speak back, that's an emotion. That's emotion. That's not, you can't tell because you don't know me. I've never done anything to you. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's it. It's just when you're trying to be tough and hard, look, there's always somebody out there with better hands with, that's willing to shoot. That's what, you know. And so it, it doesn't benefit us. I could go anywhere. I can go to Iowa and I go catch the one hood in Iowa or Idaho somewhere or Wyoming where a few black people are. And I speak, there's going to be somebody trying to act tough. It's just, it's universal with us as black men. We got to let that go. Okay, no, no, I agree. And it's funny, I got a video called, uh, after this, Why Black Men Should Speak to One Another. So that's, that's a, uh, you guys taking, man, you taking all my content, man. That's what you say, I stole it from y'all. So we got, <laughs> hold on, we got O'Shea Linux. Let me, let me kind of get to this, guys. And, and guys, make a, a like on the video. Let's talk about this occupational handbook situation because I didn't really know about this, but let's, let's look at the occupational handbook. How do we, um, Let's say, how do we attack it? Let's talk also about this. I know in college, let me kind of uh, go back. In college, we had what was called in high school guidance counselors. Um, and then in college, you have, if you want to go to professional college, you tell your counselor, hey, I want to go to medical school. Hey, I want to go to, um, you know, you have advisors, right? Um, now, at, you, you look at the occupational handbook. I know advisors are really good as far as high school and college and getting and stuff like that, even up until graduate school. But how do you attack the occupational handbook with, um, you know, what you want to uh, do? Let's say, for example, Gabe, your, what would be your strategy? A person wants to go into healthcare um, administration um, and you're a person that doesn't have a business background, something like that. But you want to go that route to get an MBA uh, or an undergraduate in training in this. What what way would you tell somebody out there that wants to do either you're a high school student or maybe you're a person that um, that wants to transition to the career? How would what would you tell a person how to achieve that? I think um, not really being in that particular field of healthcare administration, I would say kind of even the same resource that uh, that uh, Sub Sub Zero was speaking about is the occupational outlook ham book. Is that one thing that you want to do? Is that before pursuing any type of degree in college? You want to be able to, in some way, calculate what your end goal will be in comparison to that educational cost. So, say for instance, my degree might cost what fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. If the outlook of my occupation that I'm going into is probably fifty thousand, uh, forty-five thousand, then that difference in me paying that degree back is going to cause me some issues, right? I think even as you were mentioning, O'Shea, right? You were saying like, I see, you saw where you wanted to be and you knew that your 70K there in, there in California, in uh, Sacramento, wasn't going to work out, right? So you had to re-tool everything. But I think if someone trying to go, right, initially into a particular career field, look at what that career field might yield you from a compensation pers perspective, also, from an autonomy perspective, are you able to move into different industries or are you going to pretty much? Let's, let's talk about that. I'm sorry. I mean, to break, you know, I forgot to mention, oh, you, you made good. a great point about autonomy. That's the thing, yeah. like, with you and Sub Zero talk about, we'll go to Ocean Lines in a minute. I, you know, since I'm doing this YouTube shit and um, I can be more of my Negro self that God called me to be, I love the autonomy that I have. Yeah. Look, let's talk about that. Uh, a lot of black men, they look at salaries and jobs that pay good, but they don't really look at what you talked about, autonomy. Now, what is autonomy in corporate America for you? Because a lot of times people think that they don't go together. But yeah, this might be might not be the most, you know, like the dictionary definition for it. But I would the way I look at autonomy primarily is your ability to move in different industries, to move mm -hmm. to different spaces, having more freedom in your occupation than literally just being stuck at a desk. Right. Um, or even just being involved in multiple projects. So mm -hmm. kind of summarizing, being involved in multiple projects, being involved in multiple industries, interesting work, um, and not being confined to just one area and one field. A lot of times, so example of a lack of aut aut autonomy, because this might define it better, is that I knew that in automotive, 
when I was working as a wire harness design en engineer, I did not have a lot of autonomy, right? I was one, confined to a desk there in Canton, Michigan. I was going to be working on wire harnesses for the entirety of my career because I saw that dudes 9, 10, 15 years later were doing the same thing that I was doing. And number three is that I wasn't able to go into different projects. I was pretty much responsible for forged wire harnesses that pretty much went from the production, uh, from me doing the design, and it went through production, and then it just repeats itself over and over again for different vehicle lines. That would that would be something I would call a lack of autonomy, where I was confined to one area, confined to one type of project, one type of work, and I was being restricted from really my creative and my interest in career fields. So maybe the lack of autonomy could define what I actually see as autonomy is the opposite of that. So because I, I noticed that, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to go to uh, Brother Oceanics because that's one thing I want to say. Thank you, Brother Imaz. We fake tough because we are the weakest group of men in the United States. That's why I chose, and I will tell you this: the more harder the career is. The more autonomy that you am I am I am I, 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 I what you say? That that's that's actually what I wanted to kind of interject. I know the brother yeah. hadn't spoke. I didn't want to be. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sir. The, the thing is, man, if I was 18 years old coming out of high school right now, I would go and be a plastic surgeon. Average salary, average annual salary, half a million. I would make what the NBA NFL players make, at least league minimum. You know what I'm saying? And you get to look at asses all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's a win-win, it's a, it's a right? You know what I'm saying? You get to meet people, especially in a city like Atlanta or Miami. You you know, that's what I would do. You're looking at half of me. I didn't know that. If I'm going back what I know now, I have a friend named Sands that went to the same high school, graduated in the same year. He's Indian. He makes $450,000 a year. He has his own, like, Primate type. He's literally told me that, and I couldn't believe it. I thought about going to medical school. I'm in my forties. I thought about it. Like it, it's that serious with me. Like it was like I'm debating it. Like okay, how long? How long would it take? You know, like this type of stuff. Because it's right. when I saw that, I was like, man. You know, now of course people say you shouldn't go in it for money. You should do what you love. Let me, let me explain something. Right. I'm grimy. I'm not a. I, I do it. I don't love it. If 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 it, if it was up to me, I would get up and go do something else. For me, autonomy is the income provides me the autonomy to do houses, to do businesses on the right, side, right. to be able to go and borrow money and do certain things. Do I like going sitting in a corporate environment? I actually sit in a cubicle three days a week, Tuesday through Thursday. I don't like it. I, I'm going to tell the truth. But guys, I, I think we're, this is just me. This is me. Now, I know a lot of people are preach against this. I'm the complete opposite. I don't give a damn if I have to shovel shit. Whatever I have to do, if it pays the most to get me to where I'm trying to go, that's what I'm gonna do. Right. And it's not about, it's not even about what I like. Cause I like playing basketball. I can't play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. A lot of brothers like to dance. A lot of brothers like to, so you, you know, you'll go to college and major in dance or acting or something, theater. And your ass can't get a job or you go like major in psychology cause you like people and you can't get a job. To me, it's about the money. I grew up with the lights getting cut off sometimes. I grew up with, you know what I'm saying, we going to the thrift store to get my clothes with $40 tennis shoes, getting in fights and stuff because of that. I don't want to go through that. So for me, it's about the dollar. I, I can, I'm just being straight up. I'm a straight up heartless. I don't have no feelings about it. It ain't even about what I like to do. I kind of support what I like to do to make the most money so I can get where I got to go. And right. that's what we I'm going to do. I'm in that direction. Yeah, I don't give a, a show, damn. Man. I don't, I don't care man. about that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, do you think that there there is you had a capability to do what you love doing and also make the money, or you think no? That, that, that's the thing. I think what keeps me going in the corporate environment is that I I kind of do what I want to do on the side. If it wasn't for that, if I was in a corporate environment and I and my lifestyle matched the income, and I wasn't able to really get out here and do other things, I'd probably be miserable. I'm telling the truth. Most of me, they say eighty five percent of Americans don't love their jobs. Only 15% really love what they do. Mm -hmm. In order for me to find something that I would like to do, it have to be something I travel the world and, you know, do crazy, do something fun. I don't, that's not, that's not even realistic for me to find a job like that. If I could, if I could I'll do it, but I can't. So I'm not going to sit up here. Most people, 
that are even listening to this podcast are probably doing a job they don't like to do. They may go work in a factory or work at a, a tire shop or whatever. You don't like it. So I've talked to people and they say, like, for example, I knew a stripper. I, I was at a strip club one time and the girl was like, I don't like what I do. Da, da, da. I said, well, why don't you get an IT? It pays. I told her how much it pays. Oh, that's good. But I don't know. I don't like sitting in the cubicle. I like what you're showing your country. Like, <laughs> what, you know, it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, you might as well, if you're going to do something, do it, get paid as much as you can. And because most of us, man, we, I don't, I don't lie to you. I don't like, I'm just telling you, I'm being honest. Now, I'm putting as many people as I can in this industry, getting them started, getting them to move towards their goals. One of my students has started a trucking company. Another student went and worked remote in Jamaica. So I'm, I'm pushing it. But at the end of the day, I would always say, you know, you, you're really supposed to mind your business at your kitchen table as black people. Because a lot of times, most of the jobs in corporate America that we work for are only building a legacy of some white man that we work for. I'm just being straight up. I'm pushing, I'm building his grandchildren's dream. I'm helping him get to his goals. In order for me to get to mine, I got to start small. You know, the Bible says, despise not humble beginnings. And I'm just moving in that direction, but I'm not under any illusions. You know, some people do love it. Some people do love IT. It's okay. It ain't, it's just, it's not my heart. I'm just telling the truth. Okay, okay. Let me let, me let uh, Brother O'Shea Linux jump in on this. Uh, let's see how good his internet is. What up, Brother O'Shea Linux? Let's see. He, well, he's uh he should be there. I see him. Is he muted? He, you know, you know he he's in Mississippi, so you know how that works. All right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, brother Gabe. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, I think that I don't know. I've always had kind of the the mentality that if I'm not doing what I want to be doing right now, I'm gonna look for opportunities that will get me to that point. Okay. So like even though so like now, I mean I know you uh, sub sub zero would say only about fifteen percent love what they're doing, but in and and honestly like I really do love what I'm doing. I mean, and it didn't come overnight or anything. It mm -hmm. it did come from kind of what you were saying, O'Shea, like looking at different things, like looking for different opportunities, talking mm -hmm. to people. You know, I send you pictures all the time of different places I go for work and all this different right. stuff. And it's just like, I mean, I absolutely love it. So I'm not saying that we always have to do exactly what we want to do at all times. But I think that what we should do is that we should always try to keep our eyes open and our ears peeled for those opportunities, which gets closer and closer to what we desire to do, if that makes okay. sense. Kind of melding those two ideas. We, that, that'd be a really good topic for them. To, uh, um, man, that's an awesome topic for next week's show, man. Um, do what you love. I or do what you... Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what he just said. I think it actually makes sense. If I can find something that will allow me, afford me the ability to just hop continents and, and I'm doing, you know, but I still may have to do something I don't want to do sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I'll do that, but it's hard. Like for me, oh, yeah. what I do. That's not feasible. So I'm just like, man, I want the highest rate I can get, ninety dollars, whatever. Give me that. Yeah, I'll take that. Right. <laughs> you know? Look, yeah. and let, let me let me just do this real quick, guys. Um, uh, you, do you guys want to do like a, a question and answer period or something like that for a few minutes or from the chat? Sure. Okay. Let me do this, man. Um, I, I, there's no super chat required for this part, right? But I will tell you guys this. Um, I would appreciate you brothers. To like the video okay uh, and support the guys on the stream and again like i tell you guys all the time um for shows like this to make this kind of content better we need brothers supporting it's not just money it's just about um, um liking the video now obviously if we get too many questions and the person that does super chat i'm gonna take that question right because brothers gotta learn how to support the content that's for them whether whether you share the video whether you like the video where you email a brother all of these things are important you know because you got to support the content that you guys want. I, a lot of time I see guys, man, that was a great show. Our brother, did you subscribe to the guy? Did you like the video? All of these things, black men got to start getting into supporting the content they want with their time, with their likes, with their shares. Okay. So I am going to do this now. This is not a donation required, but if there's too many questions, um, and thank you, brother Howard Cooper and Marcus Love, I'll have to take the person that does super chat. But if you have a question, we can get to it. We'll take our experts on the situation. Um, and guys, you know, uh, let, let us know if you like the if you like this kind of content. Press five, and um, and uh, let us know. 
So, you know, just we thank you for being here, right? But tell people about us. Tell people about Sub Zero, okay? Tell people about me. Tell all tell all these niggas about me. Okay, tell all these niggas about Gabe. Tell we need y'all to help. We can't, we need you to uh basically help us. Thank you, Brother King. So uh okay, let's do this real. My brother King Leo, he always supporting. Uh, I'm studying for my CCNA. Any advice? What I don't even know what that is. So the CCNA. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, bro. No, you got it. No, nah, I, I might not. That's what I'm saying. I might say something a little different than you, but I was going to say this certified networking associate, Cisco routing, uh, network stuff like that. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good way to get in, but you're going to have to get up in advanced levels of certification to really make some good money. You know what I'm saying? Because the CCNA is like the entry level, which you got to start somewhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's all I got to say about that. Okay. Yeah, I think I got my CCNA maybe two or three years ago. So, uh, again, like Sub Zero was saying, it stands for Cisco Certified Network Associate. So, the first one is like the routing and switching. So, it just goes over like routers, switches, how computers work, the different traffic, how these things, things talk. I think it's a really good baseline certification. It really gives you an understanding of different networking protocols and how pretty much how computers talk. Um, I think just continuously go through. Like if you had like the packet tracer software that kind of allows you to simulate some of the networking equipment. I would like I was heavy in the packet tracer using that heavily. And um, what else did I use? I used a couple of other other like Cisco books and things. So that's kind of how I studied for that certification. But also Reddit. Look up Reddit's subreddit for the CCNA certification. And they got a whole bunch of tips and tricks. I'm going to actually find it and throw it in the chat chat for you. But yeah. That's my experience with the CCNA. Okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. So I hope that was a, let's do this. Brother Brandon, let me, okay, we got a lot of uh, questions here. Let me see here. Uh, Brandon Nichols, entrepreneurial. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me start with Brother Steve. I see Brother Brandon. Um, Gabe A, do you have any ISACA certs? If yes, are they worth it? And then we're going to go to uh, Brother Brandon Nichols, uh, the brother right there. So the ISACA certs, I haven't gotten any of those. I primarily have been with like the sand certs. I'm not sure if you're familiar with 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 with, with those. So the GX sands. So those a lot of times are they're pretty expensive. There's like probably like six to seven thousand dollar certifications. But I would have like my job pay for them. So those are really highly coveted ones. The ISACA ones, I hear that those are really good, especially for government positions. Because I think they have like the CISM or the CAP or the CASP certifications. I don't have any of those, but I know in the government sector, those are very highly coveted. But in like the uh, private sector, not as much. Maybe the CISSM one is good, but um, yeah, I don't have any of the ICE, ICE sector ones. So. Okay, okay. Uh, now the brother, uh, let, let's see, Brandon Nichols, entrepreneur or get that high salary if you're under 30? Thoughts? I wouldn't put them against each other per se, unless unless the the entrepreneur situation kind of made it where you have to be full time. I prefer entrepreneur over over high salary. If I could go and make seventy cents on the dollar of what I make now in database development and just be full time, which I'm trying to get to that point now, without because I, I used to flip houses. I don't consider that flipping is not something I, I've lived off flipping for you know for some years. I wouldn't do that again. Because of the market and stuff, I wouldn't do that. So you have to make sure that whatever you go into entrepreneurially, it has to be consistent. Uh, you need to be able to make a, a, above and beyond. But the sky on the entrepreneurship is so much higher. Uh, autonomy, as as the brother was just talking about, is important. I personally prefer that. But if I was in a situation where it wasn't, I would quickly jump my. What I should have did when I was in my twenties was jump my butt out there and got an IT in. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't. I waited. You know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, I waited about six years. But if I could do it all over, I probably would have jumped in. And I, that way I would have had the money coming in. So when I was flipping houses, then I would have been able to kind of say, okay, I ain't going to live off this money. If I make 80000 or or 100000 off a house, like, I won't just say, okay, ooh, I'm rich. You know, because I had never made no money before. So if you do a deal in, in four hours and make $100,000 off a four-hour deal you did, you know, that's going to mess your head up. But if you got a job and you're working, 
you know, you kind of, you can actually implement some discipline a little bit more and say, okay, I'm going to just keep living off my check. And that's how actually the brother um, out of D.C. from Haiti, Evans Charles, that's how he got what he did so quickly. Because he literally said, I sat and watched him at the Black Enterprise Conference. His brother stated that he got his whole check off of closing and put it right back into the, ex, the next deal and the next deal. He didn't spend any of that money. And now he owns hotels. He went to, now he's at the Nab Hood Conference speaking. You know what I'm saying? This brother, you know what I'm saying? This is a brother. Cool dude. I walked up to him, real cool guy. But he had discipline. So I'm, I'm just telling you guys, I've been on that side of flipping. If, if that's your idea, get a job. Okay. If you can. Oh, okay. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, add to that. And, um, I will say this, like, cause this, even with this, um, starting a business with this YouTube stuff. Right. And I'm, I'm doing okay for a channel my size, but you know, what's so funny about even a business like YouTube and a channel like YouTube. And a lot of times when you go into your own small business, you bring all of the stuff that you've learned in your life. And you bring that to YouTube or you bring that to the business. And I quite honestly don't think I would be effective or anything. And, you know, unless. This is just me personally, I had some form of educational training, job training. To base off of to do my own thing. Um, a lot of times, man, we like Gabe is real big on uh, a lot of people are really big on internships and, and understanding that. Very few people that I know that are under 30, unless they're really, 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 really bright or maybe a game or something like that. Most people gun for a small business, but then that business typically, usually businesses fail almost all the time. Your first time. Mine's certainly did the first two that I had. Uh, but the more experience you get from working and, and, and collaborating and networking, I think on the safe side. Because people always ask me, I mean, your business is doing good now. Why don't you quit medical school? No. Like, you, you know what I mean? Um, whatever you have educationally as a background experience you learn from working at a great company, you're going to be able to take that knowledge into whatever you're doing. I think that both can coincide. You know, I think if you're trying to be under 30 and you're going strictly into a business, depends on what it is. Like if it's tech or something like that, obviously that makes sense or, you know, but. If you have training and you have money from this job that can fund this business, like the other guys are saying, there's no knowledge lost. Like, you know, there's a, a great correlation between billionaires and educational status and work history. Like if you look at all the people, man, that are, are very successful, millionaires and billionaires, they're all going to have some. They have college. They worked in the industry and then they started their own thing. That's typically how it works. Typically, no guy on average um, under 30 starts his own business and it booms. It takes off. Now, it can happen, but it's not likely, I don't think. So that's just my thing. I think that, you know, if you if you have certain skills in a training. That's going to ultimately eventually help your business. I think that's what helped Gabe. Gabe was in engineering and now he's in tech. And then obviously those things help him in real estate. I, I think that even with my experience helps me in YouTube. Uh, so that's my opinion. I think that you can do both, but go for the skill, whatever, go for the skill. Skills are always good. You know what I'm saying? Go for the skills. Let me, let me, uh, um, uh, did I, did I, uh, let's see. Did I ask this question? I'm studying for my aviation maintenance license. I'm looking for companies that are expanding like Delta. What fields are growing into in 2020? Did we answer that already or no? No, I don't think so. I know specifically, I I have a buddy that's a, uh, like a uh, aviation pilot. He does aviation maintenance um, and he works for Boeing. I'm not sure if you're familiar, the uh, gentleman, Black Rhino, 24. Yeah, and Boeing, I think, is a really good company. And they have a lot of different job opportunities, such as like like internships. They also have a lot of con contract roles or even full full-time roles, but I know they're huge in aviation and aerospace technology. So I think that Boeing would be a really good field or a really good organization that's looking for individuals with aviation maintenance ex ex experience, specifically the maintenance license. I'm not in that field, so I'm not 100% sure, 
for aerospace and aviation, definitely Boeing is like a a biggie in that field. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. They, that's big. I, I met a few brothers driving, driving, living comfortably off that. And okay. they, they work for Delta. They hopping on the plane all over the world every other day. They fix planes. Yep. It is a good field to go into. I mean, even NASA. Hey, hey, you don't even have to shoot low. Like, go, hey, try to see if you can apply to an organiz- like, organization like NASA. You know, they're yeah. big in that. Uh, let me let me do this. Um, guys, five dollars from Ebony Knight eighty five. I'm currently seeking a degree in biology. I'm thirty three years old and I do security on the side. Is it too late for med school? Uh, well, <laughs> let me ask <answer> that one. <laughs> I was thirty four when I matriculated into medical school, so the answer is no. There's a lady that I know, man, that's fifty, right? So you know they cannot discriminate. Some countries, um, like China, you know, you can only be like thirty. Uh, and do medicine, but you know, unfortunately, the United States there's no age limit, so it's it's you can't it's not, be out of school. You can't be out of school ten years, right? Well, I no, I mean, after you graduate, you need to match within three to five years. But I will say this: Is it too late for medical school? I will say this, man. Number one, like, what are you trying to do in medicine? Okay, because here's one of the here's one of the things I want to talk to make sure my face. If you're a guy like me, um, you know, my grades could have been better in college. I wasn't a guy that wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon or, 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 or plastic surgeon. I was a guy that knew I wanted to be family general practice. That's what I wanted. I didn't want anything else. I knew that before I got here. If that's the case, then you can do the, okay, you're talking about the Caribbean route. You're talking about the Eastern European route. Then you can get into medical school, like, very easy, okay? And you can even finance through the government. If you're a person that you want to get into U.S. medical school or DL school, now you have to be a gunner, okay? Let's say if you have a, a, a decent MCAT and a 3.45 GPA, probably not going to work. Now you're talking about doing post back programs or – Masters of Science programs, which are going to be a, a, a lot more debt, fifty thousand dollars stuff like that. And then you know, are you are you good at standardized tests and stuff? You know, so because you have to do that step one, step two, step three. So you have to really figure out: Are you okay if you're a person that wants to do general practice like me in a community setting, not even at a university residency? Is that okay for you? Sure, okay, that's fine. But if if you're a guy that wants to be um, a surgeon, you're probably not going to want to go to a school out on the um, uh, on the you know out of, of the Caribbean, out of the country. You're going to need to go to school in the United States, all right. And getting in medical school in the United States, man, people are very bright. So this is your this is this is this. It depends on you. Um, you don't want to be wasting so much time. Going to postbacks at 34, 35, putting another hundred grand on yourself. You don't want to do that. You know, um, it, it depends on where you want to be. If you want to be a high powered, high matching residency, you're going to have a lot of fucking competition. Um, there are very few slots for derm, very few slots for orthopedic surgery, very few slots for emergency medicine. You know, most people that come to the United States are going to primary care. Like, and if you don't want to do primary care, you want to do the hop stuff that you have an uphill battle unless you have excellent grades and you're a very, very good test taker and a lot of things are nothing too. These things cost money. MCAT, of course, is an eight-hour test now. It used to be four hours. That costs Damn. money. Um, you know, preps cost money. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, going to interviews for medicine costs money. You know? Um, so do, do you have money? You, you can't do this without money. A lot of people in medicine, people, it's a story, it's a correlation that people that come from underprivileged communities score lower on test scores. Not because they're not smart, because resources to pass things cost money. So, again, um, mm. it, it, so, so, you know, you got to think about those things, right? Think about all of those things. Think about, am I okay with family care? Am I okay with um, internal medicine? Am I okay with pediatrics? It's at least with I am. You can be a cardiologist. You can be a gastroenterologist. You can be pulmonologist not a bad living right and you also also look you're 33 do you fucking want to be doing surgery 
if you can get a neurosurgery, do you want to do an eight year neurosurgery residency? You'll be like, what, 38, 39 nope. when you graduate medical school? <laughs> then another, think about that, right? If you want to have kids, you want to do see all of these things come into play when you're when you're 30. That's why we talk, guys, man. Education shit is a young man's game. I'm talking about young under 30. You know, do get that shit done under 30. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Internal medicine. Yeah. Hold on, let me finish this real quick. Yeah. Internal medicine. Okay. Internal medicine, you can do, you get you can get there faster. You can go out the country, you can go to Ross, you can come to even where I'm at, you can do stuff like that, get in, do your stuff, pass the step, go back to the you know, United States, boom, match internal medicine, no problem. Get on with your life. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Subjur. No, I, I, I'm, I'm the reason I'm saying asking you this is because my friend that's a doctor mm -hmm. told me he told me different. He was like, um, you know, I talked about it and he did say, and he, you know, he was talking. I told him, he asked me what I want. I said, well, Look, I like the money aspect. Like, some people tell you not to do that because, you know, you have to like it. But if you have the discipline, yeah, you yeah. can do it. I mean, you, if you get out at 47, 48 years old, I mean, and you're a neurosurgeon, shit. I mean, you guys saw the movie Doctor Strange. <laughs> you saw what type of car he was driving. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of like to me, I don't know. I mean, it's still to me, I'm, I debate, I'm not going to do it. Because to me, I think you could put that same amount of effort into buying multi family apartments or something and still accomplish your dreams. That's the route I'm trying to take. But if it was, you know, if I had to do it all over, if I was just 30, I probably would have did it. I'm going to be straight up with you. Mm hmm. I mean, it's just me, though. But I mean, you know, I mean, because the me 45 ain't that old. If you get out of 45, 46, and you're telling me for the next 20 some odd years, you can be making X amount of dollars. Shit, it's worth it to me. I mean, it just depends on what you're willing to pay. Some people might be looking at it like, I'm willing to pay eight years if a nigga willing to, willing to go sit in the jail cell for eight years just because a nigga stepped on his shoes. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I agree. Let me say this. Let me say this. If if you can do that and you have great test scores and you have great grades, absolutely you can do that. But let's just and you and you, but let's just yeah. say for example, if you don't, you know, because people who get you know you talk about ninety five percentile MCAT, ninety five percentile grades. If you have those things, then neurosurgery and stuff is available. If you don't, then you know, let's say if you even have a three point four, three point five, that's still a great GPA. But to get into American medical schools, that you're 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 in a lot of stiff competition. Those little points make a lot of difference. So it just said, why did you say go overseas? Why did you say go? Because I don't know this stuff. I'm learning. So you're saying yeah, well, that going over, overseas, overseas which like, doctors? You know, would... You're talking about your which? Ross University, your Caribbean medical schools. You know the Eastern European. So which like doctor? Like, which 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 disciplines would be easier or, or to do what you just said about matching? I don't even know what matching is. So matching what is that? Is the hospital. Yeah, you, you graduate to a program to train in whatever your specialization is. So let's say if you want to, uh, you apply to go to internal medicine or OBGYN. Most people who come overseas like myself, um, you know, you're, you're looking at for most, usually, but not all the time, but usually you're looking at going to internal medicine, which is psychiatry, pediatrics, internal medicine, or family medicine. But there are cases where people get really, really good test scores on step one and they go into um orthopedics or stuff like that but usually those slots are reserved for united states medical school students so if you want to get a high place like you know neurosurgery chances are you need to go to united you need you need to go to medical school in the united states because you can even achieve that score here as a as a as a you know uh, uh international medical graduate and a lot of programs won't even talk to you about that because they're only going to take u.s medical graduates yeah. there is a nepotism in that so that's something that you need to be, you know, so it, it depends if you are a person like the brother wants to do internal medicine, then you can go to Ross. You can come to Medical University of Warsaw. You can go, you know, because that's internal medicine is the biggest. Uh, 40 percent of all U.S. residencies are internal medicine residencies. So internal medicine is a, is adult medicine. So in it vast and you specialize in all the things like cardiology in three years, they make a ton of money, pulmonologists. Um, Make a ton of money, you know. I have a doctor, so, uh, check, check how doctor you... Jamie Rutland. He's in California. Makes a ton of money as a pulmonologist. You know, I'm I'm not doing that shit, but I'm just saying you can do it. I think another dimension. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, I, I had another question. So how would you be a plastic surgeon? Is that one of those or what could I be with urologist and then kind of jump into that? Is that one of the ones that you can kind of go into like that? Well, I mean, plastic, high, plastic surgery is off on the side. Is that not? I mean, I'm just I'm confused. I don't know. I'm just trying I, to learn. So, well, I, no. Well, plastic surgery, like, you know, you're talking about that's the hardest specialization to achieve in the country. It can be done. And typically, it's the per people with that are at the like 99 percentile on US assembly. The brightest people uh, do plastic surgery. Um, not to say that you can't be the one of the brightest people, but they have like limited. I think it's like a hundred slots limited available every year. Hmm. Um, now there's some people that don't match because they only apply to plastic surgery residents. That's all they want. But you know the, what you do on your your board score tells everything. So you know if you want to do plastic surgery, most likely you need to go to a U.S. medical school, and you're probably going to need to go to a lot of times someone one of the better ones. You're talking about now how Harvard or Columbia or you know. Um, Yale School of Medicine, something like that, and you're gonna need to score, you know, and it's hard to get into a top-notch medical school, and then plus you need to score very, 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 very high on the boards, um, on all your standardized examinations. But I mean, you can still reach a high amount of money, you know, like Brother Gabe was talking about, even in primary care with home health. Mm -hmm. All that money, you know, doc any doctor can make a shitload of money in America. Yeah, if you're a GP or a plastic surgeon, depending on how you do it. Is if you're a good business person, you can make a million dollar practice as a GP. It's possible. I was gonna yeah. also say, as it concerns like different, maybe another dimension to like the medical field or even becoming a doctor, right? Of medical practice. I think one thing that, and I don't think it's bad, but I think it is something that brothers and need to consider is that there during the time period in which you're in school. Um, typically a lot of people don't have additional jobs. They don't have an additional method of uh, income. So my sister, right, she is in, she's currently in medical school. And I mean, she got married, let's see, four or five years ago. We pay for her wedding. <laughs> she needs wow. somewhere to live. She live with my mom. Like she needs food and all these different things. Yeah, she gets money back from student loans and all these things, but that's just pretty much a bill that's adding up over the years. So I mean, she's going to probably finish medical school with over two hundred thousand plus thousand dollars in student loan debt. So I think that that's another dimension to the medical school game is that, OK, I'm going to be incurring debt as I'm going through this process. Yes, the outcome will be a very high salary, but um, there's interest. Right. There's interest to that. And there's also even the ability to um, invest um, a lot of people might not have that capability if they're going through medical school, right? Mm -hmm. But um, that's, of course, in the typical situation where individuals are just going to school and they don't have an additional method of income. So I think that that also should be a consideration that individuals make before entering into medical school. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 uh, great, great, awesome points. That's the thing, because I'll tell you this, like I'm a little bit lucky in the fact that I got my little YouTube thing popping off and I have, you know, some extra money to do this and that. But a lot of students, you know, those test banks cost money. Q banks cost money. Um, resources cost money. You know, yeah. uh, that's a big industry, man. Study prep is a big industry for Americans in, in, in high education, period. Thank you, Greg. Great, great. Geriatrics is booming. Look at the demographic. Shout out to Chess Players. Brothers sleep on the fire service. White boys have been keeping this a secret. Uh-oh. Depending on your city, is great pay. A lot of off time off. Becoming a firefighter was one of the best choices I've ever made. For the Black Heights, to the Genius Fund, I love seeing this group of smart and diverse brothers mentoring. All right, guys, have you heard about this? The fire service. I have not heard about it. I, I have. I, I had a, Go ahead. I had a comedy club, and the guy tried to charge me $75,000 for a location that I was looking at just to do water sprinklers. Now, I don't know what he means by that, but a sprinkler system is ridiculously high. Just to put those little spigots in and run it from the street, it's it's a trip, man. So you really, you, I mean, if you could get in that business, and it, it's just the training, it's really a specialization thing too. Like one of the things that pays the most that I've kind of figured out is specialization. The more specialized, even in IT or in uh, anything, man, if, if, if there's only one guy that knows this language within a 30 mile radius, what's he going to charge you? You see what I'm saying? 
if if or you know what I'm saying, like I'm in Atlanta. If if you if there's nobody in this city that knows, there's only two people. There's this one piece of software that I got trained on some years ago. I've got maybe five calls over the years, and people offered me absorbent rates to move to go to another city just for to do a six month contract because of this software that I got. Because there's not that many people with it, but it's on my resume, so people hit me up. Hey, we're looking for a guy that has this particular specialization. And this is, and I'm talking about it's 30, 40 dollars more than what I usually make. You know, so it, 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 it's, you know, specialization is a big thing. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. One thing I don't think we talked about, not just white collar, but I'm going to be honest with you. Another thing I would probably look at is electrician, plumber, cabinet making. I mean, that's a, those are good trades as well that I think we kind of take for granted. You know what I'm saying? I got a friend that, um, is an electrician and he was telling me about this guy's son who he works with and the guy's he was 19 years old he had a dad bought him a forty thousand dollar truck he went and started his own heating and air company and now that company you know, it was years ago now this guy's got i go home every time i go home i see his vans running around this cat started at 19 years old he went got his was going to community college and high school and his dad already had a train had a company he worked with his dad for a couple of years and he started his own heating and air. Heating and air, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm paying a guy, you know, fifteen hundred dollars for four hours worth of work. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, believe me, man, the skilled trades actually there's a shortage of that. And I, I don't. That's one thing I'm not just so sold on. Hey, you got to go into tech. You got to go into look, man. We also need people to hook up heating, heating and air. We need framers to frame up houses. That's a trade. That's a skill. And it's not that many young people. The average. Um, like some of these guys are average age is like 50 years old for some of these trades. Like, you know, you don't see a lot of young, especially black ADOS children or people working in these trades. And I was talking to a mechanic and he said that they're going to shut down a lot of these mom and pop shops in the state of Georgia that fix cars because now it's going, it's getting, you got to have all these certifications. You can get them if you go to community college and you just maintain them, but you'll be one of the few guys that can charge. So, you know, the price is going to go way up to get a car fixed. There's a lot of stuff, man. You, you know, it's, just put the time in. I think like you guys are talking about the Occupational Outlook Handbook or the other website, .gov, and just look at it, man, because it's, it's a lot of opportunity in, in blue collar, too. I don't, I don't, you know, I ain't too good to do it. I will take, I'll fix a plane. I don't really care. It's just, it's all about the money for me to be straight up with you. I think O'Shea might have stepped out. <laughs> so one thing that you were talking about uh, uh, is that you were speaking about that your brother works as a consultant for Oracle. Yeah. 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 That's a whole nother game that I don't think a lot of brothers un like know and understand. Because typically as consultants, they bring like other organizations and companies, they bring you in to answer some question or bring about some type of solution for their organization they don't have that those internal resources to be able to bring about that solution and i think that's another one right with the he's he's with oracle but there's also what you call like the big four firm i think black heights talks talks about it a lot yeah kpmg kpmg yeah. he KPMG. actually was sent, he was sent by oracle to kpmg yep and i'm gonna tell you when you oracle is kind of like a big deal i didn't yeah. know it was a big deal to work with oracle Absolutely. Until we were doing a guy's car, we had a car wash, we had a mobile car wash. We used to do his guy's car. He was a he did Oracle, mm -hmm. and my brother had like a three point nine GPA. He actually begged and begged, and finally the guy hired him. And when he saw next time we saw the guy, he's like, "Yeah, my brother got on with Oracle." He's like, "What? Yeah, he got on with Oracle? Like, Oracle? I didn't know it was a big deal." And so this was during the dot com era too, during the nineties. So right, Oracle is a it's a big deal. And actually, it pays about, on average, $5 more for the same amount of experience. So mm -hmm. if I'm making 50 to 60, they'll pay 65, 50. For just it, just that, because uh, Oracle just pays a little bit more. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great field to go into. Those certification tests are not easy. Yeah. But even <laughs> the compensation packages for organization like Oracle or Cisco or Google or even, like you said, K KPMG. Uh, Price, Price Water Cooper, Ernst, Ernst and Young. A lot of times, especially in the tech field, the compensation isn't just a base salary, 
but then they also incorporate bonuses because they have mm -hmm. an annual bonus, right? And but they also have stock options. So with a lot of consulting firms, they'll actually let you like part of your compensation is stock options for that company. Mm -hmm. So a yeah. lot of the work that you do with your services is directly uh, reflected upon what happens with the stock options. So if you're bringing in revenue, if you're getting additional customers, if you're just like kind of killing it in your particular field of consultancy, then that's like a direct reflection of your bonus and your stock options for the organization. So I think that it's it's a lot of dimensions that just aren't really talked about, right? From <laughs> within the black community that I had to learn, man. Like I had to learn this stuff as I'm going through it, right? Mm -hmm. I can't talk to my brother, I can't talk to my mom, my sister, my family members about it because they don't, because they're ignorant of it, not for like because they have a problem or they like dumb or something, but because they just don't don't know. Right. So mm -hmm. it's just very interesting. I think a lot of these conversations I can tell I can tell I can tell me and you are different. I'm more of a yeah. I would actually say I'm more of a blue collar guy. That's really what I am. I would yeah. I would I don't have no, it's not even a shame something to be ashamed of. I'm just not uh, that's not really me. Corporate America is not really me. Sure. It's not. I can do it though. I have the skills, I can do it in until I can make it make this type of living comfortable living somewhere else. This is what I'm doing. But right. You, I can tell you probably from a skill set or background where you were a good student, you got your work, you probably sat at the front of the class, you said it was only two people that graduated uh, mm -hmm. that were black or something, so that wasn't me. <laughs> that just wasn't me. My, my, GPA is, is, my GPA is in the twos. Just, just to be straight. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be straight. I was not the three point whatever student. I just, I did not care. I read all those Robert Kiyosaki books and I just didn't think college was important. I just did a lot when I was a kid. I mean, but even like having different backgrounds, I think that one thing that you were even talking about is where is the money going, right? Where are the salaries going? I mean, in a lot of consultancy, I mean, you can easily clear 200, 300K with your full mm -hmm. compensation package. I mean, so, I mean, even if it's not something that you definitely desire or like, or even the people who are listening, if it's not something that you desire or like, there is a lot of money in consultancy. Uh, for I, I, just, I think I prefer being a consultant than I do being an employee. I don't really like if somebody give me an employee. I want much, a, a much higher salary than oh, I would yeah. probably get because it's you basically kind of encapsulate. Now, one of the things you are kind of protected a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You kind of got a heads up if they're not happy about something you actually would know. Yeah. Whereas as a contractor, you just get a phone call on a Friday. Right. The servers are no longer needed. But yep. see, I live you live below your means. You don't really care. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just. And I, sometimes I actually like taking a month and just saying, bump it, I ain't working for nobody but myself. Just, you know, So that's the thing. I, I, you know, I'm the type of guy that I just kind of, I was an opportunist, like Jeezy said. I'm an opportunist. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of jumped into IT. My brother taught me about it, told me about it. I jumped in. I was able to kind of be blessed enough to get in and find and be able to carve out a living doing it. But I'm I'm really wanting to get back into real estate, buying multifamily apartments, building. You know, that's really where my heart is. Now that's my heart. See, it's a difference. You know, I'm just, you know, if you're gonna do something like you just said, easy to get up to 200. Yeah, I don't know too many places where I can go and pull. I know of them, but I don't know where I personally, as me, would be able to just easily just jump out. If I quit doing IT today, where could I make what I make now? It it, it, it would be hard. For me to just directly do it, you know what I'm saying. Whereas, if if it was a situation where I had four or five different options, I could do this and make a hundred thousand. I could do this and make a hundred and fifty, hundred and whatever. Yeah, you know, it, it would be easier. But that's what I tell my students, man. You know, use this as a as a stepping to to a stepping stone into what it is you like to do. You know, one of the biggest things that I've noticed about getting an IT is it helps me when I can show a bank statement with some direct deposit showing, okay, he made he made fourteen thousand dollars in the last thirty days. You know, you say, okay, this is what I want to do. The bank really will take me serious now. Correct. You know, let me let me let me let me just do this real quick, man. Because uh, guys, I want you guys to make sure that we do this. Shout out to everybody in the building, uh, uh, brother, grown man, business. You can get an NCL crane license. The school costs about 30 C. I don't even know what that industry is like, but I think the brothers in this business are mobile because he always got a lot of money. I see me donating all the time. Guys, do me a favor. We have brother Sub Zero and Gabe. I want to make sure we get people over to their channel. So, guys, do me a favor. 
uh, Brother Gabe's topic for the Hall of Game. He's the one that really keeps this podcast together because I'm actually, it's not really, it's it's because Sub Zero is always ready. It's really me. I'm a little bit in, incompetent with the, the, the scheduling days and stuff, but uh, he has a YouTube channel and a podcast that he wants to get started. And you, most of you guys uh, will, will put the link for Sub Zero channel, but he has now 102 subscribers. He had 98, so he only got four. I appreciate it. <laughs> so let, let's do this because we I always tell people, brothers all the time, we want to give people a reason why they should make black male centered content. My brother Black High supporting him. Read it again. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna go on a rant. I tell brothers all the time, I don't make content. If I wanted to go into the main metal sphere, I would blow up. But I stick in this sector because I don't even want their money. I want you niggas money, right? I want you niggas likes and I want your subscriptions. I'm creating content for you. So I expect you to support what I do and what the other brothers do, right? It's the same thing about the fitness show we had yesterday. Brothers like Sub Zero, brothers like Gabe, they want to be in these communities to help black men, but the Black Heights. But do we give enough reason for people to create content for us? And one of the things you guys can do right now is just basically do a subscription, right? Subscribe to the brothers' channel, hit the bell. You see brothers like Nick Taylor, Grown Man Business. Hey, man, these people are guys who could do stuff in other parts of YouTube, but they want us being on this particular sector. Um, you know, black men got to start to take the initiative to give our people incentive for them to give us content. Thank you, Brother Gregory Wright. So I, I, I tell you guys all, all the time, I don't even expect black women to support me, white women. I expect you to support what I do. And it's the same thing. We, we cannot get brothers to want to create Come into this space. When I started in the manosphere, and I, I think you guys can remember, it was just talking about black women are roasting. Now it's been more developed. Now you got the black brain trust. Now you have brothers like Sub Zero. Now you got you have brothers bringing content because they can see, okay, there's a market for it. So if you guys don't support this kind of content, then how can it grow? You know, so brothers got to start to give brothers a reason. That I'll tell you what, if you start to see like, oh, I got 500 subscribers. Oh man, okay. I can create content for this audience. So let's get the subscriptions up, man. Uh, comment below that you subscribe. Thank you, Foundation of Blackness. Uh, Terrence B, I see that. I'm going to shout this to Super Chats. I'll, I'll ask one last question. The brother Terrence B says about, um, I'm thinking about becoming a detention officer. Any suggestions? I have no idea about what that is. But maybe does anybody know about probation officers or detention officers? Anybody know anything about that? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that field. I know a not lot. Not familiar with it, but not, yeah. Go ahead, my bad. Oh, no, I don't have anything for that. Yeah. yeah, go yeah ahead. I, I'm familiar with people that do it. I mean, but yeah, I'm from Alabama, so it's probably only paying about 25000 in Alabama, so I don't know. I yeah, really don't. I guess it depends on where you live. I think he's in, like, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Brother Rollo. Not a lot of money in it. In California, it is, but a lot of money in everything in California, in Texas. So, um, guys, make sure that you guys subscribe. Who subscribed to uh to Brother Gabe? Let me check and see what we have right now. And also Sub Zero. Let me promote our brother's channel. Um, press one for the link to Sub Zero. Let me just do this with Sub Zero. And then what's the? You want me to put your email on the screen, Sub Zero? Yeah, go ahead. Sub Zero three six three nine at Gmail. Okay, hold Hit on. Hit me up. Oh, wait, wait, let me I talk to y'all. Let me put it up here right now. Sub Zero yeah. three six three nine at Gmail. Okay, talk, and talk to them a little bit about, about the school while I'll promote the... Uh... Well, yeah, so what I do, guys, is I run a uh, Lifting the Veil IT Academy. Basically, I put a video up about two oh, videos man, ago. No. No, that's not you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got the wrong one up there. I'll, I'll roast oh. somebody. Yeah, no. I didn't even see it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no not, 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 that's yeah. not him. I was uh, another one I was messing with, guys. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so I run Lifting the Veil IT Academy. I train students. My students get it, get jobs anywhere from $32 on up to $55 an hour. Uh, takes about 10 weeks, 10 to 12 weeks. Um, I help you get past the lack of math, the lack of experience, no certifications are needed. Uh, classes nightly, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All classes are recorded. Um, after we finish, our first, the first month you go over SQL, the second month you go over SSIS, uh, SSRS as well, the business intelligence. I do interviews. I prep you. I prep you with your resume. I'll prep you with, uh, you know, 
understanding how to operate within an agile methodology environment, all that. You know what I'm saying? You know, what you need to say, how you need to dress, everything from start, from the ruler to the tutor. Um, and it's only $400. I do that. Right now it is because um, as of next week, once I start going live with the site, shout out to Maurice, me and him been talking about that. When I get the site, it's going to be subscription-based. Okay. But still, it's only going to be 200 a month. And it takes about three months to do the course. So that's it, man. You know, hit me up. I talk to you offline. You ain't got to give me a dime. Okay. Okay. And that's sub zero three. I have a lot of people from my channel going to his channel. So that's his um, link in the, um, the, the, uh, that's his link there. I'm posting now. Now, brother Gabe, we, we got him up to, uh, looks like 108. Uh, oh, dope. Man, yeah, you know, it could, could be better, but let me read brother. Um, so Black Heights, I know 200,000 seems like a lot of money for many people, but it really isn't. Get into management and leadership positions and top corporations, and that will be a bad year. Trust me. Ooh, brother Rollo, brother's getting things happening. Salute to the brothers. Thank you, Reggie B. Support. Thank you, brother Reggie. Support. Thank you, uh, Terrence B. Brother Nick. Um, trying to stay away from them probation niggas. Uh, let me just uh, any any anything final things you want. Let's see if O'Shea Linus can talk now. O'Shea Linus, you here? Let's see. I'm here. Can you hear me? Whoa! Now the white man and delivered you to, to give the benediction, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know how it be. You know how it be. With all this technical <laughs> difficulty. Seemed like I would just go ahead and buy me a proper audio system. Well, it seemed like they don't deliver good. to where you live at, brother. We understand. But anyway, anyway, look, I've been sitting up here, I've been sitting up here listening to Sub Zero and Gap. Man, y'all laying down some of the toughest and most important knowledge when it comes down to this this business stuff that you can get. Man, y'all y'all real with it. You hear me? And y'all just sit here stole a lot of what I was gonna say. I only see that's the problem when I get in on the end. Y'all don't say it all the good, just like going to a barbecue. You show up too late, then they ate all the good stuff, and now you just have to get the leftovers. It's just the beef. I'll tell you what, O'Shea Linux, I got the Sunday Rumble coming up in 45 minutes, so you you will have. That ain't my cup of tea. That's uh, so, uh, no, no. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. it, will be, it will be tonight, <laughs> Nero. Well, what's the subject, I'll say? What's the subject? Yeah, the, let, you oh, know, the subject tonight with Obsidian as the lead off will, uh, uh, uh will, um, will money basically it's kind of a, a tie to this topic in many ways. Will uh, success in money make a black woman submit to a brother? Mm. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. And that's you, a good one. We, we, mm. we, 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 I know what we all on the panel think. We, you know, we think yes, but uh, to a certain degree, <laughs> depending on other factors, right? We gonna all say the better you do, yes, yeah. and typically, but that's technically, no, what do you think, brother? So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with what you just said. I think, I think it can. Um, yeah, definitely but I, I, I think. Black men need to be in a position to, uh, you know, exact punishment for. So you got to be in a position to twist somebody's arm. Like mm -hmm. if you're not, then you won't get. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things you won't get. That's just me. I ain't, I'm not in the Sunday Rumble. I'm not getting in that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, it is going. It is going. It's more of a manosphere Rumble today because we got Obsidian. We're not gonna have the usual suspects tonight, but we're gonna have. It's gonna be interesting because you know it's only you can only put six people on this, so we're gonna have uh Frederick Douglass, I mean O'Shea Linux. Uh <laughs> I got some thoughts about y'all. I got some thoughts, but let me say this and then I'm gonna get out y'all way. Look here, I always like to start off with saying, Look, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole with this situation. But that's why I see that that's kind of why I see a lot of people be and a lot of things. I run across a lot of uh women in CNAs. Being CNAs that they barely making it here and there. And I see a lot of folks sitting around talking about I need to make some money and I need to do this and that and that. And that's why I try to that's why I kick in and make efforts to try to look in and tell them, look, if you want to make money or get into something where you can make extra money, look, start look at places like eBay. That way it does eBay don't take it takes very little money to get into eBay. Actually, zero. You just have to start selling some of the stuff that you have around your house that you don't want. 
and start building up your reputation on eBay. But I'm going right. to say this, uh, and I'm going to say this right here. A lot of time, we as black people, what I've noticed, we think too li- we think too linear. Too, we we think one way. This is the only way to do it, and we don't. We it's hard for us to take our minds and stretch it out and believe I can get to success in many different ways. Right, you don't have right. to just go to work for somebody to be successful. You don't have to. You don't necessarily have to have your own business. You just have to think. What can I do? To where it, it it could get me to, to other places I need to be. eBay is one of the ones because see, look, you can find stuff to sell everywhere, anywhere, and you can do it. And you can do it. I, I'm look. I got. A, I know a guy. He bought a whole entire house. He bought the whole entire content of a of a house for five hundred dollars, and this thing had brand new sewing machines in it. They have never been even taken out the box. So imagine selling the sewing machine and a few other things. He made his money back off that. Now the rest of that stuff would just profit. So look, just don't think one specific way to get it done. Look in the look in the Pinterest. Go on the Pinterest, see what kind of ideas that you can come up with. Google stuff like what can I do from home that Google stuff like Google anything that you're interested in, and I hate to sound like I'm uh, um, uh, I'm mummering and just going off of the cliff with it because my mind is thinking one thing, but we're different words coming out. <laughs> yeah, that's but it's all about thinking more than what you're actually doing, but realizing where you are and starting right there, and build yourself up from that. And a lot of times. We don't want to give up a lot of that TV watching and stuff. So in order to do that other hard work that need to be done to get us from where we are to where we want to be. A lot of that stuff, two, three, four hours after you get out of work, you have to cut a lot of that extra stuff out and get mm-hmm. up to something that you're really interested in doing. And at very least, Googling some of the things that it would take to get there. Right. That that's definitely true. Let me let me just do this real quick. Um, uh, let me just and, and uh, I'll send you a link. But let me read this because I gotta. Uh, damn man, I gotta get out of here. Fuck, I gotta get out of here. I got thirty minutes before the rumble start. I gotta upload these damn videos. <laughs> oh, man, I gotta I got an exam on Thursday. Dang. Oh, man. Yeah, this is this is a story of my. I told you, man, my life my my day starts at burnout. <laughs> you know, anybody who's been like in professional school or engineering or whatever you take, you guys know what burnout is about. Like we've all hit it, you know, and, and studying. That's where my day is. It starts at that point. Like some people, some like I remember I talked to this one guy. He said his reps start at failure. You know, lifting weights. He said my reps Woo! start at failure. Yeah. Wow. I said, damn, you know, because he's trying to, you know, he's a bodybuilder. I said, bro. I said, man, now I know what he's talking about, man. I said my day starts at burnout. Every day, man. I think, uh, like, was it last month, two, three months ago? I worked ninety-three days straight. Um, that's you know, offline, online. You know, I was only day, and then when I was in Africa for three weeks, I was in the field every day, seven days a week. Um, shout out to Simone Davis. I have my own money. Dark Man Jeff. Any opportunities for accounting professionals? All right, that'll be the last one, but we'll ask that last. No more questions, guys. I, I gotta go. Marcus Love should submit for a season. Terrence B. A dollar, Reggie B. Support the Rollo Show. Brothers getting things happening. Salute so to the brothers. Uh, Nick Taylor. No matter how far the world advances, roads, trains, planes, automobiles, and ships can't and won't fix themselves. High income for the specialized spots too. Uh, Big Bro Gregory Wyatt. Practicing medicine in underserved geography for a defined period often results in student loan debt forgiveness. Uh, thank you, brother Gregory, again for the de- demographics for um, geriatrics. Insidious Purple. Appreciate the progressive discussion. Shy players, brother, sleep on the fire. Oh, I read the one already. Brother Women Brown, thank you. Um, I'm studying. Oh, I read the, okay, I read that before. I'm a Z. Okay, I think I read all of them. BLS holding, thank you. A new way blockchain technicians are in high demand. Salaries at 150. Solo TV 84, thank you so much. Uh, Leo Anthony, thank you. Um, okay, what uh, I think I read everybody else out. What, what do you think about it. this uh, idea about accountant professionals and um, 
IT stuff like that? Uh, my brother's an Oracle financials consultant. He is an accounting major. In the nineties, Oracle offered a, a financials. He does accounts payables, accounts receivables. He he sets it up and stuff like that. Got hired by Oracle, stuff like that. My brother makes over two hundred and something. They don't offer that certification anymore. It's been deprecated. I don't really know. Um, I, I know uh, a, a few guys that go with Alabama State with him that got out that are millionaires, African cats that are accounting majors, but they started out. He said they started at like thirty thousand or something. So it just depends, man. I don't know. They started doing their own tax service, and they made they millionaires. I wanted to make a point, O'Shea. Yeah. Um, a brother just said two hundred thousand dollars is not a lot of money, and that's relative. And the reason I say that is because um, black men taking our community back. You remember him? He the one that introduced me to you. Sir, he had a fire. video. Yeah, that brother had a video where he made he he went and pulled out like fifty thousand dollars out the bank and right. basically was able to buy his way out of nursing, which is what he was in. And he talked about living on fifty percent of your income. So if you like me doing what I do. Per week, I pull down like $2,500. If I take half of that, which is still a comfortable living, pay all my bills, do everything I'm going to do with it, and take $1,200 a week and drop $5,000 in the bank every, every month for, for, for 12 months, you're looking at $60,000. You do that two or three years, you, you see how it, it's, it can really move you fast. And it's all about discipline. You know what I'm saying? And, and we have bad spending habits. If you got, I got family members that make three hundred thousand in, in broke. I can't buy them for a hundred, call them for a hundred dollars sometimes. So it's it's all on how you manage your money. I know a dude that make fifty thousand and got he got about eighty five, ninety thousand dollars in the bank. He, real smart brother, discipline. So everything we've named up here today won't do you any good if your ass got bad spending habits. We got, so, we got, man, you know, we definitely got to show on that. Yeah, so you got to, I mean, you set up two bank accounts. Like, I, I got a savings account. That's how I was able to get into the house I got. I went, set up a savings account, worked the contract, and didn't, and didn't, and the savings account was in another city. I had to run down there and get the money out. I just worked there for months. Worked the contract. And every, every Friday, money was going in that account. $1,000, $1,200, $1,100, every money in the account, every week. Just going in there. And, you know, I worked that account for like, I worked it for like three or four months. This thing I know I look up, I had the money that I needed to do what I was trying to do. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's what a good income can do for you. But if you're making 35, you know, you, just to make it, you might need 30. So it's not going to be as easy. So discipline is key, man. I don't care what you're doing. That's real. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. All right. So, guys, thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate you having us, man. Yo, man, thank you guys so much, man. Uh um, some love here. And God, <laughs> everybody uh in the chat. Uh we'll be on the Sunday Rumble. I'll make a uh the thumbnail and everything. So I gotta go right to the rumble. <sighs> All right, man. I appreciate it, O'Shea. Yeah, Let me know if you're ready for that. Let me know you're ready for that conference, man. I'm ready to help you, bro. You got I'm, I'm gonna hit you up now. I'm gonna go and start moving. We're going to start booking. Yeah, we we're going to start getting this deposit. Right, Let's we, do it. We got, we got to. We got to. We got to. We got to. All right. Okay. So we're going to put the, uh, put that in, in motion. Guys, thanks again. All right. And uh, see you guys on the Rumble. Peace. All right. Peace out. All right.